One more time, back to the top. <laughs> it's the dragon's turn. At the top of the initiative, the dragon's fire breath is not reset. So what it will do is it's going to fly up to the airy. Oh no. And enter the through Griffin. one of those little windows. Yeah, hey, those two guys from the airy are dead, right? I'm going to assume that the worst has happened to them. The Griffin's up there. Well, there is one griffin that you can see plying away part of one of their faces. But no, they're not both dead yet. 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 Right. Yo, save the eggs. We need to raise those as our own. Mm. That's the most important part of this mission. <laughs> Pet. Pet getting. Go. So after that, then we're going to go back to the invisible stalker that's fighting with Thomas Ito. They're facing off in a one-on-one -on -one battle and just kind of smacking each other around. That's all they're really doing. <laughs> You're like wasting perfect. time. All you have to do is be reckless and you negate some of his invisibility power. Uh, do I have reckless attack yet? At oh, yeah. Two. Yeah, you have it. Which gives you nine disadvantage to hit him even though he's invisible. But he still has advantage to hit you like he would if you were reckless. So, so it tries um, to slam you once, and I think can... it has advantage. If he's invisible, yeah, he has advantage. So on its first attack, it misses you, Thomas, and then it slams again. Roll it twice. For a total of eight bludgeoning damage, it'll hit you. Four, really. Four, because you're raging. And it doesn't move. It doesn't really seem to be... Um, it doesn't seem to have a mind of its own. It just continues on a direct path of trying to kill you. That's all it's doing. Cultists we can skip, because they're all pretty much down. Arthur. Arthur. Uh, <clears throat> the... The bed is still on fire, and Zephyr was on the bed. So I'm going to move a little forward and control flames and take out another five square thing. Oh, of that's right. You were trying to reduce the flames of uh, mm -hmm. what the dragon did to your little tower. Mm -hmm. Ryan, you should scroll back up to where they are on their turns I know. for the map. I got so many things I got to do. Stupid map <laughs> of giants. Okay. And I'll call out to Zephyros and I'll say, Zephyros, are you okay? He looks back and he jumps off the bed. On his <laughs> turn, I guess. Not yet. He's getting ready to jump off the bed. Mr. Thomas Ito. Mr. Thomas Ito. Mrs. Ito. All right, so can I, I can't see him because he's invisible, but I know where he just punched me from, so I know where he is. Is that accurate? Yeah, you know where he is, but you have disadvantage to hit him because right. this creature's not even moving. Then I may as well, I try to find him gently with my magician's staff, which means reckless attack. Do you really wield a staff? That's like reckless attack. Uh, I mean, technically, it was a mall that's been reskinned. It's got like a giant uh, stony metal weight on the end. But okay. he still thinks of it as his magician staff. Got it. Go ahead and Classic. roll the hit. Pew. Nope. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. I gotta scroll back and see if anyone gave me uh, an inspiration yet today. Not no. today. <laughs> All right. What happens when you roll a one? Mm. He's just delaying. He's trying to get one. Yeah, I'm just delaying. All right. Um, I will miss so much that it 
kind of spins me around and I did get, you know, uh, lost as to where he was. And I'll use my bonus action rage oh, teleport. Kind of Boop. But... And I have no idea where he is anymore. Okay, so you teleport away. That's a bonus action. And uh, now you have an inspiration after the fact. Son of a... <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Ray Ray. Ray Ray coming through in the clutch. Just a few <laughs> seconds too late. Sorry, bud. No, that's all right. That's good. It's good. All right. Did you roll with advantage? No, he doesn't <gasps> get disadvantage normally, but uh, when he was right. So you yeah, because he's invisible it. anyway. Yeah. Theodore. Uh, can I see the dragon out the window? No. You can see that the dragon is mostly inside. On the top floor. And... Oh, that's right. It's open on the top floor, isn't it? Yep. There's large windows in the uh, Griffin's area. It's crawled its way through pretty easily. It didn't have to squeeze too tight. And you can hear its roar above you. You can go check it out if you want. <laughs> uh, so am I able to get a line of sight at like his head or anything because of the angle? I don't know how the angle works here. From here, there. you cannot get a line of sight because it's not all the way in. Okay. Unless you go into the lift. I will rotate. Is this area the best, probably, to get line of sight? And where he is? Mm. You. It's really hard to tell unless you can actually see him. You don't know. He's up above. You can't see him from here. Oh. That's true, but he was at this window, so I'll assume. Yeah, you could assume that you might be able to get line of sight on him if he enters further. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll hold my action to shoot him with an arrow when he comes within eyesight. Okay, as he enters into the tower, what you see is the Griffin that was attacking the cultist peels off and moves to leave the tower. The only one that stays in the tower you would play actually you can't see, so you don't know. That was your turn you're holding in case it comes into view. Mm -hmm. Zephyros will jump off the burning bed. That sounds like a good idea. He'll move there. And... He tells you, you need to go down, down to the first floor. That's what he yells. He does not take any further actions yet. Carmen. Uh, I mean, if he's yelling to go to the first floor, I believe him. So. Um, 10, 25. I think that's as far as I can go. Is that far enough to step off? Yeah, you can step right off the ledge of the uh, hole in the floor. It puts you Before into I the do. featherfall area. Before I step off the ledge, I cast create or destroy water over his bed and put it out. Okay, that's a 30 foot area, I think. Yep. Which is enough to <laughs> cover the you rest of the bed. bed. <laughs> that's right. And then I go down like Yep, you go down at 60 feet a round, which will almost get you to the floor in one round. If I put my keg in the lift, does it go down too? Did you not have it attached to your back? No, my magic keg. Magic keg. Yeah, Spiritual my spiritual weapon. weapon. Okay. Um, no, because you have to move it every round, 20 feet. Uh, bye bye, spiritual weapon. I mean, you can keep it active. Maybe just stand up there, you can move it to the lift. I don't think it gets opportunity attacks, but... What do you mean opportunity attacks? There's no one left alive in this room. Yet. Oh, I mean the dragon could be coming in here. That would be a bummer. <laughs> yeah, all right. I guess I just put it over the lift so I can still see what it's doing, and then I go down. Boop. Okay. You can move it 10, 20. It'll get right next to the edge of the lift. Cool. And then I jump in the lift so that I drift this way when I get down there, right? 
Okay. As long as I wanna, you don't drift into the levitate area. Yeah, I want to. So maybe I'll jump in so I drift that way, kind of. But I want to, like, mm -hmm. go at an angle. So what you'll end up doing is hitting against the wall, and you can um, push yourself off the wall. Hit against the wall underneath, you mean? Mm hmm. Because it's a 100 okay. foot drop. You're not even going to make it to the floor in this round. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I'll go and I'll bounce up against the wall. Boom. Okay. So I can still see this part where my keg is going to be, but I don't want to be like directly in the opening in case the dragon breathes fire down. Good call. Although I think it's only a 60 foot cone. I don't know. Like that. 200 feet up. Right, Carmen. Like, it's real bad. I get the f out the way. You have kind of an idea. You've now seen two blasts from a dragon. Surprisingly, at level four, you've already encountered two dragons. It's one more blast than most people see. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Back to the top. We roll d six. And it does reset. So uh, what you guys see on the top level is a blast of flame across the entirety of the area. You just hear the roar of the dragon and it screams and fire blasts out and it's just pure red if you look up at the top of the left. Oh, uh, that poor griffin and her babies. Yeah, I don't think we're getting those eggs, Brian. <laughs> No, but we have great cooked breakfast. <laughs> we are the breakfast club of D&D. &D. And then... Oh. You hear Rock. it scream once more as it turns around and flies off. <clears throat> and it flies fast. And it flies away from the tower, which is moving northward. It ends up going southward and disappears rather quickly in one round. But we still got a fight with Thomas. A one-on-one -on -one so far. <laughs> I wonder if I can roll this with advantage. Well, I'd have to do something. So let's just try this. Oh, it doesn't matter. It hits you for a total of 10 bludgeoning damage. <clears throat> it moves up to you. You can't see it as it rushes to you. You can feel the wind brush your cheek and then um, your face as it slams into you and then it tries it again. What's your AC? My AC is 14. 14. It slams you again for another 8 bludgeoning damage. Let's see, so we do 5 and four. Yep. Arthur, the bed has mm. now been put out. Oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> uh, am I aware that there was a huge amount of fire above? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're aware of all this. You can <laughs> see out the window very far away now the uh, dragon tapering off. We must help those griffins. Nope. Whoop. <laughs> Can <laughs> you get that far? Let's see. Ten. Where are you? Where were you? Uh, I was there. So I stepped forward 10, to put out the 20, bed. 20, 30. Yeah, you could get to right here, which is the levitate area. Do I go, get? Do I get in? Yeah, you can jump into the levitate area and it lifts you up towards the um, area. Oh, it's just like asking for nightmare fuel. You don't want to see what's up there. It's bad. And what if I get up there... There's two crisp and burnt bodies that are still just floating in the air at the top of the lift. That was the coldest. Yee. Uh, if there's any fire, I'll try to put it out. How so with the control flames? Yep. All the uh, hay beds and nests are on fire. There's some tapestries and other things in here that are on fire. Anything that's cloth is on fire. And I'm I'm looking towards the griffins. Well, there's only one griffin left in here, and it is dead. 
Dead, dead, oh. dead. Oh. Bummer. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll put out something then. I'll put out a tapestry or something. Its nest is on fire. Oh, I'm going to put out the nest then. Well, a little bit of the nest. Okay. That's so you'll put out the fire around the nest and... Hmm. Odds or evens? Come on, we need this. <laughs> Odds. Odds. Yeah! One <laughs> <laughs> leg left. You put out the, the odds fire. are in our it favor. It seems that this uh, griffin was protecting its babies at the time of the attack. It didn't lift up, and it took all the upfront damage of the fire. Its body um, starts to crumble into ash. The bones are even cinder. There's no more flesh or feathers. And as it crumbles around these pristine and intact eggs. Well. Thomas. Okay. Hmm. So once again, you realize where this creature is as it continues to slam into you. This thing is worth the cloud. There you go. 23 to hit for 11 bludgeoning. Is that counting your rage? I'm not counting the rage damage. So 13 bludgeoning damage. I don't know how to make it add the rage damage. Uh, we'll just count it. I don't know if there is a way. There is a way, but it adds the rage damage every time you swing instead of only when you're raging. Again, oh, as you okay. swing your staff through it, it seems like there's a little bit of resistance and it goes all the way through it. It doesn't connect as if the uh, mass is solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like fighting smoke mm -hmm. pretty much and you can definitely tell you're not giving it the full force of your swing Theodore Whoa! and I'm going to teleport to the other side of it Whoa. Uh, you said we can see the dragon right uh, very far off it flies fast you're flying fast you would not be able to reach it from here it's more than even 300 feet okay that was my question. Is it more than 600 feet? At this point, it's... Yeah, it's more than 600 feet. Okay. Uh, let's see. And actually, from your angle, you can't even see it. Arthur could see it out the windows. Gotcha. I was told to go down, so I will get into this area. Okay. And do the same angle that... Uh, Carmen the dwarf did. did. Yeah. Following his footsteps. I'm pretty sure this cult is you guys knocked out or did you kill? I think you killed him. There's one down. Oh, the one upstairs. I accidentally killed with the barrel. But there's one. <laughs> Every time you say the barrel, it just confuses me. A spiritual <laughs> weapon. A spiritual barrel. That's right. The double barrel shotgun. My but man. yeah, you did non-lethal on one at the ground floor, and then the barrel was not able to do non-lethal to the other one, so that's why cool. one has an X on it and one has the... So out of all this mess, there's one single cultist alive. Yeah, downstairs. Okay. So you jump down the elevator, and you push off the same wall that Carmen just ran into. Zephyros will jump into the lift going up. Ooh, sorry, buddy. You see him appear at the top there, right next to Arthur. Ah, you didn't want to see what's up there. It's no good. Carmen. Um, let's see. So where do I come out on the ground floor? Like over here somewhere? Uh, probably like right in the middle somewhere around here or here depending on oh, I, I, I jumped so I ended up over this way like I thought I meant to leave the wall. 
Oh, I push off the wall. Well, then I put. I want to push off towards this guy. Okay. If I can get that kind of an angle. If I can't, I'll end up like whatever over here. Yeah, you can get to him this round. Okay. Yeah. Mm, so does it take all my movement to get over there? Yeah. All my fairly insignificant movement. Your limited movement. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so I get over there, and I don't know about the invisible stalker, so I just yell, Tom, what the fuck are you doing? Stop <laughs> playing with yourself outside and come in here. We have problems. You can hear him from here. The door is still open. Um, is, he like, is he like going all crazy? Well, he can hear you. I don't know. Does Thomas scream while he's slapping it with his staff? <laughs> oh my god. Pardon me? <laughs> I'll think about my words a little better next time. Seriously? The best lump all day. That's my thing. Slapping So what you say is that should be the title of this episode. <laughs> Slapping it with your staff. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, that was great. totally fucked. <laughs> Anyways, right. Thomas. Is he like making a lot of noise? Uh, he he's making a fair amount of noise, though. It's more of a um, he's uh, he's having a good time of it. I can't fucking do this with your <laughs> he's good time your with it. But, yeah, he's laughing. He's uh, <laughs> making a lot of noise in that sense. Okay. He's laughing so hard that he's crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I don't know what that what that means. So, <laughs> oh, hold on a second. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> Tom, stop playing with yourself. We need your help inside. <laughs> so I'm using my action to dress up the unconscious cultist. Okay, um, you dealt non-lethal, so he's not bleeding anywhere. He's just. He's got a black eye and a broken nose. Well, I guess there's a little blood from his nose. And if you heal him, he will awaken. If you want to just cast Gentle Repose... You mean Spare the Dying? Spare the Dying, that's the cantrip. Yep. Then you can keep him unconscious until the hour passes. Yeah, I just want to tie him up and keep him sleeping happily. Okay. So that was Carmen's turn. Back to the Stalker. And it just continues to slam you. <laughs> yep. I can't even <laughs> say that with a straight face. <laughs> it, everything's falling apart. As in this combat, we should almost pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Take eight bludgeoning damage and again. Blah. Take <laughs> ten bludgeoning damage. Ow. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, I'm better now. So it was eight, so four, and then five again. <laughs> you probably see like a weird red mist around me because I'm bleeding all over the clouds. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, there's probably a, a bit of blood now. You're definitely being pummeled your face is starting to take a big uh you're you're already bloodied aren't you yes sir oh yeah you're hurt significantly you're showing signs of wear and tear and it's arthur's turn arthur you're standing uh, next to zephyros in the lift he just looks at you with these large sad puppy dog eyes I will get off the lift. Which one is burning? All of them. Except the well, one with you the put eggs. out. The one on the right side, right? Here's the one you put out. So, And it's all the way out? Yeah. I'll just look to Zephyros and I'll say, uh, uh, Mr. Zephyros, uh, what do we do? And i my turn. Thomas. Mm, all right. I will 
Uh, let's see. It hit me in there so I could feel it. Um, ah, most glorious day. Ah, ah. And swing again. Another wow. For 16 Eight. bludgeoning damage. 18 damage? Yep. Yeah, plus rage. bludgeoning damage. So max damage. And you slam into it, and you can't really tell if you're even making a dent at this point. Yeah, the trouble is that it gets two attacks, I get one. Therefore, no matter what, it wins. Uh, you might be starting to figure that out. Uh, I, I'm i not figuring it out. <laughs> I'm, I'm full on in rage. I'm in, like, the glory of battle right now. <laughs> okay. He's feeling the magic. For one brief instant, I had backup. And Carmen was like, hey, you knock it off. <laughs> and then left. He didn't even look out the door. I don't even know if that thing's out there. Yeah, you didn't even see that it's invisible. So you you legitimately just assumed I'm not helping. I mean, all of the cultists came inside, so I don't know what the fuck you're doing. I'm like, what you didn't even happen? see all of the cultists. So you don't know how many there were. That's fair. I probably should go check out what's going on out there. Theodore. So where do I land? Oh, where did you want to land? You pushed off the wall, same as Carmen. When you uh, I'll stay by the door if I can. Oh, you can get to, like, right where Carmen is. He can get farther than me because he runs more. Well, that's just where he lands. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. 10, 20, 30. Can I get that out the door with my movement? 10, 20. You can get right here. Can I see Tom Meadow from there? I don't know if this um ruler works either. So you could try the ruler. Nope, that definitely doesn't work, right? <laughs> I think it's off by half. Yeah. I think it's at 50%. Right by two. Yeah, right there. You have line of sight to Tom. He's swinging at something? He's swinging at something. <laughs> he's having a... He's practicing. But you can't really tell what he's doing. I guess all you can see is him screaming and laughing, and you haven't seen anything else, really. Any blood swirling in the thing? No. Any kind of shape taken? No. Hmm. Nothing. Would I be able to do Hunter's Mark and see if it hits something? I think you have to see your target. Uh, choose a creature you can see within range. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can't do that. Uh... I guess I'll hold my attack if something attacks him. Okay. You'll hold try to attack see it. if something attacks, you'll loose an arrow at it. Yeah, or try to anyway. Alright. I mean, he's bloodied, so he definitely looks hurt. Let's see how many characters Brian can play through this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> this will be like my characters of the last campaign. You just keep dying. Technically, you didn't die. No, you hear Zephyros let out a mighty giant roar, and you have to plug your ears, Arthur. You have to put your hands over your ears because it's loud and deafening. And if you didn't, you'd probably actually go a little deaf for a temporary. Does that use my action? No. <laughs> Uses your reaction. And he grabs one of the charred bodies and. <laughs> Tosses it out the window. He's like, no. And you see the body go flying through the window. And it breaks up when it hits against one of the arches. And kind of dissolves into a little bit of charcoal and ash. Oh, God. He's raged. <laughs> Carmen. Um, um, what is my thing? I have this thing I do. Uh, 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 oh, preserve life. Mm, that's an action. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go boop 10, boop 25. That's not enough to see what's going on. So 30, 40, 50. I just run outside. Okay. 
So you run all the way outside. You see Thomas laughing and screaming, swinging his staff. And he's got it held like he's about to attack again. As he does... Well, let's see if you see anything happen. I mean, I see him all beat the F up, right? Oh, he's beat up. Yeah, right. he, my face is like getting purple. He turns around, he's kind of got blood all over his face and his lips. <laughs> I've knocked a tooth out. Uh, sorry, I only rolled, I rolled minimum for my healing words. You get eight hit points. Uh, a second chance. I'm like, what are you doing? We have to go inside. <laughs> I have very stubborn cloud to deal with. What are you talking about? You're daft, man. <laughs> he says mm -hmm. as something slams against him for 15 bludgeoning damage. Seven eight points gone. It and slaps seven. his head back around. And he's looking at you again. And you see blood fly. Oh, now I understand. <laughs> oh, does my attack go off then? Oh, uh, sure. You can use your reaction when you. What was your held action when you see him getting attacked? Yeah. I'm going to try to attack whatever is attacking him. I'm going to give you leniency so. in the wording. Because all you see is him spin his head around and blood fly. But go okay. ahead and make an attack at disadvantage. Uh, let's see here. Natural one. Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Let's get to that. <laughs> uh, roll attack. Roll I missed the game where every box was friendly fire. 13 to hit is not enough. So your arrow goes wide. You can't really tell exactly where this creature is coming from. Okay. And take another eight bludgeoning damage, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> Ow. Really? <laughs> That's bad, dude. Wait a second. Where, where's where's the eight? Uh, he hit you with a twenty-three on his second slam. Oh, okay. I didn't see. So it's half to four. It's actually four. So actually four damage. Gotcha. Horrible. Still, that's as low as I've been. I mean, it's your first fight in this campaign. And yeah, you keep seeing his body get pummeled. It looks like he's almost um, <laughs> like the Fight Club scene where he keeps hitting himself, but you can't see it happen. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Arthur. I, I walk over. Well, you're kind of in the lift. Did you did you ever get out of the lift? I guess you could have pushed off the giant. No, I did. I did get out of the lift. Yeah. Okay. We'll say that. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, I'll just say, uh, Mr. Zephyros, uh, uh, do I see the eggs? Yeah, they're intact. Okay. I believe we still have a couple of eggs here, and I do declare. I do declare. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That'll be my turn. Okay. That was your turn, Thomas. How you mm -hmm. feeling there? Um, I will... Oh, man, I'm feeling real bad. But it doesn't change anything. So <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to spin around... Um, and actually face back at Carmen and laugh maniacally <laughs> and teleport and then beam this thing in what I hope is the back of its head. Okay. <laughs> roll to hit with a straight roll, which is a hit because you're reckless attacking. So, yeah, 14, 15, 16. 16 bludgeoning damage. Good job, bro. 
I'm giving it my best, but it is not enough with a non-magical weapon where it has more attacks than me. Yep, every mm. time you hit it, you feel as if it's resisting a bit of your blows, and I mean, you're doing the same thing. You're resisting, but it's attacking more. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Theodore. Uh, I'm going to aim for where he shot, or he hit it. Okay. I'll move 10, 20, uh, 10, 20. I'll move up to like right here so that I'm not doing a direct line of fire to him. Okay. And. Same thing, still disadvantage. There you go. That's a much better hit. For nine piercing damage, you launch an arrow right into it and through it, and it goes past Thomas's body as it goes through this um, invisible matter. Okay, that's my turn. Carmen. I equip my shield. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. And then I am going to move to engage this thing. Okay, you move up to where you think this thing is. Try to take some heat off my buddy. I feel with the tip of my hammer until I encounter something that's not Tom. Mm hmm. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't have an action left. So that's what I do. I just move up and kind of like try to keep it busy a little bit. <laughs> you can't put <laughs> with your tip. Keeping it busy with the tip of your hammer. Busy, you know, and I will. Uh, I will just human. a tip, just to see what it feels like. That's right, just a tip, just to see. <laughs> <laughs> you can have man. I roll ones on that D four every time. Take eight more hit points. Yeah. But I'm running out of spell slots pretty quickly. Yeah. Um. So eight, which is six. 24. Which means next time you're going to have to wait to go down before I give you any more hit points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There. And I think I'm just going to skip through this battle. Are you serious? After I do all my hit points. Once you did the work gonna, of getting there, it kind of becomes a moot point. It's going to require some resources, but I mean, I can let you guys slap it out for a while if you want, or I can skip through it. What do you want to do? That sounds like a thing you said. <laughs> that wasn't an answer. <laughs> skip through what I said. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, we're skipping through it? Boo. I mean, we could slap it out for a while. It'll take a while. Well, let's, let's just skip to the end. Yes. So skip to the end. Brian, your character will take a little bit of damage to skip through. Okay. And we'll just we'll call that the resources spent. Because gotcha. otherwise we'll just stand here and hit each other for a while. So At, at half speed. <laughs> at so slow. So I'm going to give you... The damage of one more attack. Okay. 14 bludgeoning damage. I accept your minimal pussy damage. <laughs> so, seven. Or is it not cut in half because this is skip ahead damage? No, it's cut in half. Okay. Nice try, jerk. I could have made him take the whole thing. <clears throat> I was just trying to come up with a way to make it quicker, because it just takes a long time sometimes going through um, one enemy that's surrounded over and over. You're just hitting it, it's hitting you. It's kind of, it gets boring after a while. Mm. All right. Okay. Change the music. And for now, combat is over. Woo. <laughs> up in the level airy. Up. No, you don't level up. Up in the airy, Arthur <laughs> Zephyros goes over to the eggs and he bends down 
Um, he picks them up in his hands. Poor Lunar Beak. Was it Lunar Beak? I like how he doesn't remember. Yes, Lunar Beak. I'm supposed to remember all the Griffin names, Josh. I, Zephyros would not. Yeah, Phanon, Pontius, Smirk, Spike, and Lunar Beak. I had them written down somewhere. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I put him in chat. I'm looking for that, but I can't find it, so screw it. <laughs> a big, giant tear drips from his eye onto the egg as he's bent over, and he's holding it in both hands, looking down on it longingly. Poor Lunabeak. I'm very, I'm very sorry, Mr. Sephiroth. Um, maybe, maybe Carmen can help. Mm. <laughs> he make wonderful breakfast. Right. She didn't deserve this. She didn't deserve this. <sighs> Do you know who these attackers were? Oh. I I don't like dragons. <laughs> mm. Well, maybe I'll find out who they were. I can use mm-hmm. I could use my spell once more today. Oh, I need to do that, Mr. Zephyros. Wait, what shall we do with these eggs? I I hope there's some one or two of my griffins left. Did you see any others make it out alive? I can't, I can't say for sure. He looks over at the other nests, which are now mostly charred. The hay, the straw, um, went up quickly and burnt out quickly, too. Oh, this is... This is very unfortunate. Yes. Thank you for what you did. You you save these at least. He snipples. Down at you guys, you all ended up um finally taking out this invisible stalker. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? I come back into where the cultist is. Okay, you come back into where the cultist is. He isn't tied up quite yet. Oh, I thought it took an action tying him up. I mean, you could have given him a cursory, but you probably okay. want to spend some time. Sure. I'll actually dress him up proper. Yeah. Bondage knots. You know. Right. No safe word for this fucker. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait a second. <laughs> There's always Easy. a safe word. I'm going to medicine him. Can I use medicine to wake him up? Sure. Boop. If I do a good job. Hey. Whoa! Natural 20. So you slap him around a little, gently enough to <laughs> wake him up. Sure I do. <sighs> he blinks ah. a few times. His eyes are watering and red. From like being a, hit I, so hard, you probably uh, broke his jaw. He just looks up at you. What? Well, I can't hear you. You can't hear me for real, or? Sometimes I can't hear you. I didn't hear anything on that one. Can you hear me now? Well, yep. Yeah. That... Okay. We need to talk. Wake up. All your friends have been defeated. You're the only one left. Are you sure about that? I. I am sure. I beat in two of them their heads with my magic keg. And there's nothing left to talk about. 
He's just gonna let well, me I... go, right? He gives you kind of a half smirch. <laughs> I will let him go. I laugh for real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, lad. I don't think that's necessarily in the cards for you. Uh, perhaps if you cooperate, we can come up with some sort of agreement. But for now, a lot rests on how you uh, answer our questions, probably. And what are your questions? Oh, who are you? And where are you from? And why did you come here? Why are you protecting a giant? Well, mostly, uh, he's given us a ride to where we need to go. And he's been kind to us. All giants are evil. I don't believe you. Just do what you're going to do already. Okay. And I grab him by the collar. No, 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 no. <laughs> he grabs him by the collar and stands him up oh. as if he's all Wait. vertical now. Wait, Thomas. We need to talk a little bit longer with him. Let's not be hasty. Oh, very well. He is obviously one of your midget halfling friends. Uh, pardon me? The, the little, little man from the bar. Nay. I don't, I do not think he's a dragon. He, he hates all, all giants, just like him. Well, I, I they sure that in common, but I don't, I do not think he's a dragon, per se. I think he, perhaps he's just some sort of a human. Just a dragon loving groupie. I, something to that effect. Hmm. Listen, is there no way I can convince you to talk? What do you want to know? I don't believe you're going to even keep me alive. Uh, there is no reason to kill you either. The ground will do that just fine. <laughs> oh, may mayhap we uh, turn him into some authorities or something. I don't yes, know. I'm sure the police will find him. Hmm. Mayhap we should leave justice up to the giant. After all, they did kill his pets. <laughs> okay, that sounds fair to me too. I shrug. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't make him talk, so... I can't make him talk. Um, does he have any wounds? Like, visible wounds? I yeah, broke his he broke his jaw. Okay. My thumb's pretty big, right? Oh, God. I what? put it into his nostril, and I oh. lift him. Oh, he's going to pass out. Um, yeah, you can wake him back up in a minute. You put your thumb in his nostril. You lift him up with your thumb, and you can do that pretty easily with your strength, but it rips mm -hmm. through the thin skin of his nostril. It doesn't I, manage I... to... um continue holding him up and when it rips through he takes some damage and goes back unconscious <laughs> as he screams and it's cut off by his unconsciousness I okay him again and he may talk again next time no step away we didn't torture people here there is not torture gravity did it stop thomas i can stop this if you wish Back away, please. Let me attend to his wounds. I mean, mayhap will kill him, but not like that. He deserves a clean death at least. Why? All things deserve a clean passing. If you can give it to him. Who will make it natural? Hmm... <laughs> I didn't know what that means when you say it. I am not sure you mean what I'm thinking when I hear those words. He will go from the sky. I will first let the giant talk to him. Mayhap the giant has a magic way to pray into his brain and learn his secrets. All right. Go get We're just going to be walking the perimeter on the outside looking to uh, see if I see anything else in the sky approaching us. Okay, so you're keeping an eye out, making sure you're not ambushed again, especially by that of yep. a dragon. Yep. 
Sounds fair. Okay, so I spare is dying, and I try to bring him back around if uh, Zephyros comes down. Okay, Zephyros is not coming down yet. I mean, I'll just wait. I'll hang out and sit next to the poor unconscious cultist to make sure that Thomas doesn't uh, uh, talk to him anymore. Practice is... <laughs> no more talking. <laughs> stop. <laughs> For love of Morden, stop, please. Arthur, you're next to Zephyros in the area. He's still got the egg in his hand, and he's just very sad and consolable. He doesn't have much to say. He's holding the egg. I have these mixed feelings of holding life in my hands and seeing the death of my griffins. I don't know what to feel, but what is this feeling inside me? And he kind of looks at you. But uh, you're not there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mute and silence. Mr. Zephyros, I, I, I do not, I do not know much about feelings. <laughs> um, especially of this sort. We should just be thankful that these two eggs remain. Well, perhaps the other griffins have survived. I hope so. Is there a way to communicate with them? No, they always come and go as they please. I'll. I'll drop you off near Fire Shear. I learned a few things that you guys need to know. Mm. Well, that while we were being attacked, I I was able to cast my spell. I was able to see some answers of what's going on. I, gather your friends. We'll talk. We'll meet you in your room. Yes. And I'll drop down. Okay. So you drop down the lift. You find your friends at the bottom. Everyone but Theodore. They're near this uh, unconscious cultist. There's still one dead cultist that looks like he's been... Um, his head's been smashed in by some <laughs> form of spiritual barrel. I'll go bring over the other cultist. Oh, Lord. So that we can talk to him instead, maybe. <laughs> that will not work. I have unfortunately done for him like he wanted to do for us. Yeah. Maybe we just talk to him in front of the other one. Oh, ah. Uh, well, all right. I, <laughs> I guess that's all right. He's already dead. I, you can't hurt him anymore. Yes, I can make quite a show of it, though. I uh, Friends. Carmen looks a little bit squeamish about the whole idea, but, I mean, he feels better about that, obviously, than beating up the still-alive dude. Friends, um, all the griffins are down. Uh, well, oh. Oh. one of the griffins are down anyway. The others are missing. <laughs> Two eggs remain. Uh, Zephyros would like to speak to us in his quarters. He wishes to make a gift. I knew it. I will be Griffin rather. Mm. Let's go. I, Tie that one up. Leave him there. Uh, Maybe the baby Griffins need food to eat. Uh, Thomas, uh, instead, could you go see, Miss, see where Mr. Theodore is? I beg your pardon. Uh, we need to... Is, Speak to Zephyros, and it'd be, it'd be good of Theodore to join us. I have not seen that one since uh, before the fight began. He is very sneaky. I just yell out, Teddy! <laughs> nice. Uh, you hear that. It's a bellowing cry. Not quite as loud as Zephyros' uh, 
shout of sadness, but you can hear him. I'll walk in through the door. Uh, who is Teddy? Teddy found your woodsman. Uh, maybe we can bring this cultist up to Sephiroth. I, I drag him with me. Good idea. And I grab the headless one. Just grab the it's one that's headless, head. but it's definitely um, smashed yeah. his head. Smoosh head. Uh, as you drag him, you're leaving a trail of blood. I don't Gross. think it's will bother them. It'll be fun to see what happens when the trail of blood goes into the lift. Does it just like levitate with everything else? Like bloody droplets going up? Yeah, kind of like uh, liquid in space. Zero G. Exactly. I make it you face. <laughs> Everyone I heads take... up to Zephyros' room. Boop. Stay close enough to the edge of the lift so I can actually grab the edge when I get up there. Yeah, good call. You guys are starting to learn a little bit. We're very good at it now. You took uh, the I dead did. cultist too? Yeah. Uh, Thomas took the dead one. I took the unconscious one. Nasty. Yep. <laughs> I'm used to the barbarian. I'm starting to figure out what's going on with him. I'm like, ah. Now I only understand. He's built like this. <laughs> built like a brick shit house. And twice as angry. And twice as dumb. Hi. <laughs> uh, Mr. Carmen, uh, were you able to ask this cultist any questions? I asked him, but he would not. He would not uh, uh, speak to me. I am thinking that mayhap the giant knows some way to persuade him with magic or something. So you all end up in his room and eventually he comes down. He looks pretty sad. I am rifling through the cultist things to look for, like, any sigil of the Zentarum or whatever. Uh, no. No sigils. They have that patchwork on their robe. Patchwork. Does anyone have history? I don't think anyone has history. I have a religion. <laughs> uh, as close as I get. No. I thought uh, the wizard had I, I thought I did too, but I don't. So it's not uh, a religious cult. It's some other kind of cult. You haven't seen that in any religious symbols that you know of. Okay. Zephyros looks at everyone. I, I learned some things about the attack on Nightstone. Hi, what did you learn? Well... I learned who did it. Unfortunately, I can't learn why or all my questions I can ask are yes or no. They came from the magic rock in the middle of town. What? There was a magic rock in the middle of the town. They stole it. I didn't ask that. <laughs> oh, I know they did. I didn't have enough time, but I... I know who did it. There was a there is a cloud giant in the city of Stormhaven named Countess Sansuri. I uh, can you spell that? <laughs> yes. And he'll just uh spell it out for you and I'll just type it out for you. Sansuri. The Countess She's the leader of the city. People follow her closely and they she acts as the queen regent or the queen of the cloud giants. Uh, where where does she reside again? Stormhaven. That's probably the city that you told me about. I he kind of tears up again. The tears are welling up in the bottom of his eyes, and they start spilling downwards. Do you know her personally? I, I've met her a few times. I don't follow the cloud giants around, or I don't follow their laws. And 
She's not in Stormhaven right now. I I was able to ascertain that. Why she's running a mock? She's in her keep, which also floats through the sky on clouds. They call it Lin Armal. I can you spell that too? Yes. <laughs> I thought it was Stormhaven. That's the city. Yes. But that's not where she is right now. That was another thing I was able to find out. Ah, uh, I guess. Also, how does she feel about the Red Dragon cultists? Giants and dragons have never gotten along. Why not? It's... Uh, didn't we already talk about this a few days ago? Maybe we talked to this about this with Fulgaros. And no one seems to remember. They just <laughs> said, that is how it is. Racial tensions, blah, blah, blah. No real answers. Well, they've never treated each other well. Each time, wow. I mean, you can see as of the day. A tear drips from his chin and down into his wispy cloud beard. And when it gets into the wispy cloud beard, it just falls right through as if it's raining. Listen, I have one cultist left. Mayhap he can give us answers, but he want to talk to me. Do you have some magic way to compel him to speak or to give up his secrets? Um, I mean, if I had some time, I could probably... Probably uh, use a certain spell on him, but I, I need a few days. How about you, Zephros? Can you cast any spells now that would help us? Not right now. I could in a few days, maybe as well. well maybe, maybe we can take him with us on our journeys. Uh, we will have new pet. We can call him Griffin. <laughs> We won't take a cultist with us. That's daft. It's like asking to get stabbed in your sleep. Eventually, he will find a way to be free, and then we'll have all hell on our hands. Mm. What can man with no arms and legs do? Oh, I wouldn't do that to another man. No, you would not. I would rather throw him off the edge of the cloud and give him a good, clean death. Zephyros looks a little um, surprised and confused by this conversation there won't be any of that not not in my tower no not in your tower no <laughs> obviously not in your tower what do you wish us we're not gonna throw them off the edge we're not barbarians uh... <laughs> <laughs> well then what you do you have there <laughs> What should we do with them? We should turn them in. Yes, perhaps to this Countess Century. No. Or maybe to uh, your flying dragon halfling. Uh, no. He, uh, I don't know. Usually I would agree with you. And even now I'm leaning in that direction. But I didn't know if the law sides with us on this one. You're a giant and there is proper amount of prejudice against you. Well, then that's the law. We should abide I... by whatever they choose. <laughs> I'll be dropping you off at Fireshire in a few days. Or near there. Right, I'm not going to big... go right to big... Fireshire. Out of game. Um, how long has it been? When's our next long rest? Uh, five days from today, since we just fought and canceled any time that we had. Yep. So, will we have enough time to for me to uh, prepare spells, or no? Um, you could long rest and then prepare spells. You can take the time if you want. I mean, I, I wanted to the coast near fire. Shore. I'm just saying if we're going to be around this guy after we long rest. That's up to you and him. 
So you can ask him if you want. You can do that in game. But he tells you, we'll be in, we'll be at the coast in a few days, and I'll drop you off near Fireshare, and you can take him there, and they can judge him accordingly. I don't want to uh, be the executioner. Uh, gentlemen, in a few days I'll be able to uh, use a spell where I can get into his mind. We can get some answers then. Bye. We'll keep him safe and sound until then. I, I look at Thomas pointedly. No shenanigans. Mm, take nothing that does not grow back. Got you. Nay, hey, leave him be. I'll I'll take care of him. Okay. So he'll wake up in another hour. As mm -hmm. long as you had stabilized him, I believe you just, uh... I spared his spared dying. the dying yeah. after you ripped his nostril open, or Thomas ripped his <laughs> nostril open. No baby scratch. Well, do you need some food, lad? Or are you hungry? <laughs> because we are making bacon, and I hold up the other cultist. Thomas, go away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. I will make bacon. Do you want any? No, thank you. I didn't right. eat. I will bring you the veggie portion. I veggies. It's good. Maybe it's I'll just eat my rations. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have any food for us? That's not people. So you're waiting until the cold just wakes up, then. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'll I'll make sure that his needs are cared for for the next few days. Like, if we're gonna fast forward time, I'll make sure I stay with him all the time so Thomas doesn't get at him while I'm not around, and I'll feed him and take him outside to shit through the cloud and stuff like that. Okay, you can um if you're gonna be the one with him for the next few days, tending to him and making sure he doesn't die to Thomas's hands, you can give me a persuasion roll. Oh God. Uh, we'll call it a skill challenge over the next few days. So it's going to be the best two out of three. So bad, but okay. Boop. 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 Ooh. Oh, weird. Yep. <laughs> Real bad. Well, it could have gone the other way on that last roll. What's up? So Do you have an inspiration? On that last roll. Do you have an inspiration, Josh? Yeah, but fuck that. What am I going to use it to roll a four? No. <laughs> <laughs> best two out of three eight and 15 for me is not bad <laughs> i'm not really persuasive like i'm not super kind to him i but i keep him alive and safe basically yeah he at the least he'll tell you his name okay and uh, yeah best two out of three you did all right it's not the worst and what's his name I'm looking that up right now. Why are you pushing me so fast? <laughs> Give me a second. What's his name? <laughs> his name is... <laughs> eh, that might be too hard to pronounce. We'll just go... Kevin. <laughs> Ronald. <laughs> Hi, Ronnie, my boy. But... <laughs> If you're trying to get any information about where he came from or why he attacked the tower, he doesn't really give anything to you. I mean, I'm not really trying to get him to talk for the next few days. My goal is literally to keep him alive, make him reasonably comfortable, and you know, make sure that his needs are met until we get him to the place that we're going. That's my goal. So if he wants to talk about stuff, like telling his name, cool. If he doesn't, that's okay. Like... Carmen knows his limitations. He's not trying to chat this guy up. And he finds out about your limitations rather quickly, too. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not like... There's no reciprocation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, no ill will after I beat the shit out of him and killed some of his friends. Like, I think what he did was wrong, but we have a difference of opinion, and that's okay. Done. <laughs> it's... Uh, somebody else can judge this fucker I'm just here to keep him alive okay. Sephiroth doesn't want to fall off the tower it's his tower, fair So I don't make a big deal out of it or anything but 
I do throw the other guy off the tower. I mean, he's dead. Fuck him. <laughs> dead guy gone. Yep. Roll to see if it hits anyone. Oh, God. We're over the water. <laughs> Odds are evens. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a boat. The random boat. It just holes it. It's gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to fast travel a few days so you guys can tell me if there's anything you want to specifically do in these few days as you're traveling so, towards the coast. As far as Zephyros goes, I'm going to kind of hang around him, console him when he needs consoling. Um, uh, sometimes I'll try to take his mind off his, the loss of his griffins to, you know, speak magic with him. Mm -hmm. uh, as well, did he? Didn't he ask two different questions? Am I missing oh. some information here? That oh, short rest. He Pretty. asked a few questions, but to narrow down his choices, he told you all the information that he got from it. Okay, okay. So just that it's Sensuri from Stormhaven, and and that she's not in Stormhaven currently. Okay, she's Lenar in Lenar Mel. Okay, correct her a citadel in the sky correct okay i will help ronald get a little bit uh knackered and see if that helps him talk a little <laughs> i'll break out my l oh knackered not knackered. no knackered <laughs> you're so helpful <laughs> everybody deserves a little drink every now and then so you... he will drink, but he won't drink to excess unless you like force it down. No, I wouldn't force anyone to drink if they didn't want to. Except, except for the wizard. Except I... for small mage. <laughs> small mage hasn't even taken a drink yet. He needs it bad. Hmm, kind of like he needs to get laid. Get him some good woman with a nice beard on her. So three days will not mm -hmm. be a lo enough for a long rest, Thomas. Uh, but you can right. use a short. But we still rest. have it. Uh, <laughs> all right. I Thomas. Thomas. Thomas is the one that's hurt. He is the one that's hurt. But I can do a couple short rests in there. Uh, yeah, use your hit you dice. Do, I mean, you could do a couple, or you could do one. It doesn't matter. Just you're gonna have to use your hit dice to heal. I'll start with at least one. So. And you can use as many hit dice as you want. In a short rest. You can only get half back on a long sure. rest. I'll, I'll use two of them. Are you below half your hit points right now? Yes. I can get you up to half before you start doing anything. I can boo and make okay. you have hit points. So go ahead and do that. Because that's so the do divine that. channel divinity. Yeah, how many hit points are you down? Um. Oh, uh, let's see. So... Uh, Oh, from half? Well, at 46 would be half. So I need six more to get to half. Okay, so take six. Boo. Okay. And then you can. Yeah, I'm just going to recover. A... I took a short rest, so it refreshes on a short rest for and me. And then I gain 14. Also heal. Dude, uh, and I'm going to regain a second level spell. Um, so you can two. regain, yep, up to level two spell slot as a wizard. Or combined level two. So if I had two first levels. Correct. Yeah. 30, so now I'm at 37 out of 45 between those two. So that's pretty if good. If you use two hit dice, you'll gain two hit dice on a long rest. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, you could. Uh, oh, I only rolled, rolled it once. Nice. Yep. Um, I can roll it one more time. I marked off two in my things here. Cancel. How do I we'll go back? Roll another hit die. Short rest. Roll. Short hit die. Three, man. So five, oh, more. five more. Close Very. To full. It's pretty close to full anyway. Okay. Thirty-seven. Plus one, two, three. Yeah, forty-two out of forty-five. Even if I rolled, like, balls on that last one. Yeah. 42. Save changes. There. And I will mark down one, two, hit die. 
short rest. Did you want to do anything specifically, Arthur? Uh, besides recover that spell. No, I was just talking to Sephiroth, okay. consoling him, and okay. Over the course of a, oh, and uh, don't want to forget Theodore. Uh, no, I didn't have anything in particular. I'm just waiting to get back on land. <laughs> yeah, tired of this flying thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so over the course of a few days, the Griffins do end up coming back. There are three now instead of four. One of the griffins takes over um, the eggs, nesting them, making sure they'll hatch. And Zephros, he spends a lot of his time in the airy with his hands against the archway, looking outside and petting his griffins as if they're cats. He treats them kind of like you would treat a cat. He... Spends a little bit of his time helping Arthur in his studies with your uh, gaining your spells. <laughs> and besides that, he'll talk if you talk to him, if you have anything specific. Otherwise, the things he talks about are his studies of the world of Faerun. Do I gain proficiency in history? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can take a fee for that at some point if you want. Yeah, I know. Skilled, right? Mm -hmm. But if you don't have anything specifically, the time will fast forward. No. We'll fast forward then. Yeah. <laughs> Seems fair. <laughs> When you're approximately uh, 30, 40 miles away from Fireshare, from the coastline, Zephros makes sure the tower will land not right near the city, so as not to scare anyone. And you can see the city from here, but it's just a speck in the distance of light. And he'll look out at it and tell you, the, the cliffs of Fireshare... We, I've studied this place a bit, and I think at one point a meteor landed here and smashed the lands and caused the cliffs to shear off. Part of the land tore away and left these barren cliff faces, and that's where people have settled. It revealed a lot of different ores and precious metals that people are after and they made fire shear right there right where the meteor landed the rest of the mm -hmm. land broke off into the trackless sea never to be seen again some say it might have become part of the islands of Orlsberg. I I don't think that's true it's just a nice story I don't know a lot about the current political affairs or who is most to control, but they have a triumvirate. Three members reside what? over the town. A triumvirate. Hmm. Sometimes I have that too. When you get two special people in your life together at the same time. No, I mean, they are, they are both beautiful. We have triumvirate. <laughs> nay, nay, lad. Uh, triumvirate. No, there's no horses involved. No, uh, it's when you have more than one person that kind of leads a place. Yeah, you have yeah. Three you specifically. Take Aye, three, yeah. But that usually works. when I'm around here, my, uh, well, Lunar Beak, that's where she conceived. <gasps> With the triumvirate. At the mm -hmm. Oh, Martin, please help us. Hi. Uh, gentlemen, did we, did we bring our horses on board this tower? Yeah, I'm just going to say you, um, I thought we did. Somewhere. Okay. There's enough room. 
sure. <laughs> Just like that. Meow. Oh, sorry. You can hear my cat. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> I kick the boys out of my room because they make mischief while I play a game. Pretty much. Darwin just tries to eat plastic to get my attention. But he wants to shut all over me and make me sniffly. So, are we landed? Uh, you will land soon. He's just telling you a little bit of what he knows about fire share. When I drop you off, the I will be going on my own way in a few short days. So if you do need anything, come back before that time and we can talk or... I can't take you all the way to Bryn Shander. I just don't want to go through the Clouth and Bale. I, I suspect that's where he came from. He motions to where the cultist is tied up. Clouth hmm. is a, an ancient red dragon. Old Snarl, they call him. But the one we saw was not Old Snarl, correct? Old Snarl's enormous i wouldn't want to be i don't want to be here at that time if he's nah, he'll what up? very dangerous okay I, I assumed it was not him no we saw a little baby <clears throat> if it was him we probably wouldn't be talking so this one that was left behind we bring him to some Somebody who, to punish him, correct? Yes, I have taken a challenge. Not, not before I can speak to him. I mean, you have plenty of time. If you like to speak to him, well, have I, no, I'm going to use I'm going to use a spell. Maybe we can find uh, some information about him. Oh, I just needed a couple more days. Uh, I do. Should we wait here? We continue to bring him with us, I guess. You can I wait mean, here if you want. I'll be here for a few days, like I said. Give my griffin some time. We can take the time, too. Yeah, we learn exciting new things. They must have stores here. We can buy a burlap sack to tie him up more with. Nay. Nah. Convenient. I need a sack. He's fine. We can buy uh, hammer and nails to keep him convenient. Nah, we can buy us. We can put him on sled. <laughs> so, how close are we to the town once we're there? <sighs> uh, Twenty miles. You'll make it there before the end of the day. You'll make it there actually in a couple hours. I wait here if we want to refresh our spells. Stay in the castle in the floating thing in my jig for a little while. So I'm gonna land you, you know, a little bit away from town, like ten miles. You'll have to okay. ride in if you want. Or we could would, just uh, wait here for our someone, refresh. Would someone, would someone accompany me to town just for today? Uh, uh, maybe I can pick up a violin. Um, <gasps> maybe I can get some of that ink that you have set for us. Yes, we we will go musical instrument shopping. I am in need of new horn. Uh, in need of what now? A new horn. Oh, I don't think they have those in this town. I, I bet proper motivation and they have almost anything. Oh, Lord, please. <laughs> Lord Morden. Uh, he can come too. I <laughs> he comes with us <laughs> everywhere, lad. <laughs> but never shows up. Nay, that is not how gods work. Especially not ones that don't show up. When I heal you, that is more than the grace being shown upon you. Mm -hmm. My powers come only through my connection with uh with my god. Mine too. Uh your god is a god of the stick? No. Or oh, just your imagination. Uh fine, whatever. That's there. Very good. 
So before we take a break, going over the things you gained from the cultists after you threw their bodies over the edge and looted them, I'm assuming. I got a foot. Oh my god. <laughs> if you want. Taller? They'll start stinking real soon. No, I didn't take a foot. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> you have found a bag where they had emptied the invisible stalker out of. And oh yeah? It's a magical bag. A bag of holding. Mm -hmm. Bag of holding. On that same cultist, you found another little baggie where he had some different components, you think. But they need to be identified through either oh, a I spell will... or a cana. I will, uh, I'll, I'll take those and I'll identify, I'll spend some time using a ritual to identify. Oh, you have the spell. Mm-hmm. I oh, have identified. Sweet. And for the rest of it, um, someone roll a D hundred. Oh, who may do it? I don't uh, care who does. Theodore, it. Alex, Alex, yeah, you have good luck. Teddy, roll uh, your uh, numbers. I lad. That how that works? Forty-one. N no, you roll higher. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <Talking> it up. <laughs> <laughs> good practice, though. Come so on, be cool. magic stuff. No, it's not magic stuff. This is just how much money you find. Magic mold. Magic wizard stuff. So you find... Where is that chart? Oh, I can't find it. You find 41 gold total. <laughs> Where's the chart? <laughs> That's a good way to do it for low level stuff. I mean, I just put it in the bag of holding, right? And I figure uh, perhaps we should start a slush fund for the group since we've been pooling our resources for armor and whatnot anyways. Hmm. <laughs> Alex, Agreed. Hmm. I guess I'm not getting paid. I mean, yeah. I'm broke. I spent all my money on your scale mail. That's fair. So then we make decisions about how it's spent as a group. Mm. Maybe we have triumvirate. Have to pay much gold for those. <laughs> I think we're a forumvirate. And uh, not like that. Pardon? Never mind. <laughs> So I put the money in the bag of holding, and if no one has any objections, I'll hang on to it unless someone else wants it. I'm not super possessive, but I'm just, like, doing it. That's fine. So you can hold the bag. Okay. Doing it. Just doing Quite it. that 41 good. Cool. You can tell me what I identified. Yeah. I'm just going to start again, and Josh can be here when he's here. He can show up when he wants to. He does His show character up when he wants to. Like His character doesn't do the talking thing anyways. <laughs> so you identified the spell components. Oh, these are awesome. You find... It's a bag of dust. And it has six pinches of dust, approximately. And the dust is pixie dust. <laughs> So you can do a few things with it. For one, you can s substitute pixie dust for any enchantment spell component. So if you don't have those components, you can just substitute the pixie dust for it. Or you can use the pixie dust, sprinkle it on a creature, and something magical happens. Almost always random. Well, it is random. Mm, that sounds awesome. And I guess since you identify it, I'll tell you the effects it can produce. It's not guaranteed to because it's one of these. You might gain flying for 10 minutes. You might fall unconscious for a minute. You might be affected by confusion 
He might become invisible. And that's it. Five different effects. Okay. So yeah, if you want to use that, let me know and we'll have you roll a d100. Anything else? No. Gold, you got gold. Okay, I'm just gonna put it in the Discord chat. That way you can look at it if you ever use it. Is that in uh D D Beyond? Uh it might be, but now it's in party members chat. Okay. All right, so there you go. A few days pass. You guys don't venture into town, I'm assuming. Has a long rest happened yet? Yep, you make it to the coast. You're going to wait a couple days for your long rest. I got one thing that happens before the long rest completes. We buy many horn. No, because you didn't venture into town. Oh, come on. Well, you said you didn't. So a day after the tower sets down on the coast, you see a griffin riding towards the tower. Anyone that's outside or anyone that's in the airy would see this. There we go. Most likely, uh, Thomas, you're kind of usually outside on the cloud matter. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, Theodore, you're usually keeping a watch. Mm-hmm. So you would all see this. Casting lots of gust cantrips, trying to recreate the clouds and playing and practicing with magic. Sure, you're able to move the cloud matter as you want with gust for the most part. So, what did I miss? Did we decide to stick around for a few days or are we going to town? What's the deal? Sticking around for a couple days. To finish okay. the long rest. Oh yeah, let me do the long rest then. But again, well, you don't even know this. You don't see this. So, what are you doing, Thomas and Theodore? Oh. Did you say what we saw? Yeah, you saw someone riding a griffin towards the tower. Did I not say oh. that? You just said a griffin. Sorry. Yeah. You see someone you said a griffin, riding a griffin but... towards the tower. Mm. What do you think? Mm. I'm growing suspicious of visitors, though griffins are very good. I bet the biggest mage would like to know. Yeah. Have... Okay. So, we'll go let him know then. Guys? What? What's that? Have we finished our long rest yet? No. This is before the long rest. This is oh. what's interrupting it. Cool. <laughs> Not yet. You'll be soon. Soon. So you're going to go tell Zephyr. Yeah. We go inside and uh, go up the levitate shaft. Okay. Zephyros is in the area. He's spent a lot of time in the area. And when you get up to the top floor through the uh, cutout hole, you make your way over the ledge and... None of the griffins are perched there except the one that's uh, now sitting on the eggs. Mm. He is leaning up against the archway, looking outwards towards the approaching rider. He doesn't even know this rider. More griffins return. What? Perhaps more griffins return. No, no. Is that one of yours? No, that's not. That's Deshara. Deshara. Deshara the griffin or the rider? The rider. Oh. <coughs> she lives in Fireshear. Fireshear. Ah, welcome party, perhaps. Uh, sure. You seem hesitant. What is wrong? There's nothing wrong. She's... We get along, usually. 
There's nothing wrong. I've talked to her a few times, and the Griffins Are you love this area. You were expecting her visit, then? I was expecting her to show up at some point. Hmm. Very good. Is she here part of your triumvirate? No. She's oh. part of their army from Fireshare. Their little militia. Mm. She's a griffin rider. Yes. Obviously. Perhaps you two could make giant babies. He gives you nothing. I feel like you can see my face right now, probably through the yeah. silence. Like I, I actually <laughs> saw your expression, <laughs> and he doesn't say anything in response either. As she gets closer, you can definitely tell she is not a giant, and there will be no making of giant babies. She is dwarven. Oh. Uh, you make Goliath babies, half half big, half small. That's not how that works. It's, <laughs> it's somewhere in the in the deep past. I heard the story once. That is why giants uh, have their blood inside the Goliaths. That's how it happened. Probably not cloud giants. No, they would make very cool, floaty air Goliath. As you're talking, she approaches and... I wish you would fly here faster. This conversation is awful. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> no, I'm having a one-sided conversation with a sexless giant and a woodsman who does not talk. Um, you see all of our expressions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just surprised Josh hasn't talked in about 10 minutes. It's crazy. He must be eating or pooping. Yeah. He's not actually here. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> oh my god, Tashara. Nice to see you. <laughs> Tashara, you made it. She lands on the ledge near the... Uh, Griffin's roosts. My mic was off. Oh, that's why you were so silent. <laughs> oh, I'm eating it. Yeah, Sorry, I knew he was can, eating. You can turn it back off for a while. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, it's she the lands shark. on the Zephyros. I glad to see you again so shortly after the last time you came by. He looks down. Tashara, I'd I'd like you to meet some new friends. He looks down. This is Thomas. And Hello, Sarah. Miss Tashara. I am Thomas, here to be helping you. Well, it's good to meet you. Are you uh, have you known Zephyros for long? Aye, we are old friends. He is like father to me. Also, you have very fine griffin. Ah, oh, he's a beaut. I've Raised him from a baby? Mm. What is secret to raising from baby? It we are going to have babies work. ourselves soon. And uh, I want to be a good, good griffin parent. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to you sometimes. <laughs> Wait, sometimes. You know, I don't know must, how to respond to him all the time. must be good secret. You did a great job riding that one. I want to ride this one from baby until I can own this guy. Uh, are you talking about the clutch of eggs that are in Zephyros' tower? Are we not in Zephyros' tower right now? We are. Are those, okay. are those under your possession or those under Zephyros'? Oh, like I said, Zephros is like father to me. We have been knowing each other for a long time, and I take it as my charge to raise them. It is very important to me. Right? Is that right there, Zephros? I never even heard about this one. He just looks down. He he kneels down next to Thomas, so he's almost at eye level. He still towers above you, even when he kneels down. I'm sorry... No. No, those are 
Those aren't yours. Not mine to own, but to train. No. To make strong. I'm leaving in a couple days, and they're coming with me. Wait a second. I, I do feel a little bad about throwing your conch shell out the window, but... Yes, you throw my magic companion out the window, and then you do not even let me choose a replacement. Well, you can find one on the coast somewhere. I'm sure there's plenty of conch shells on the You way. think there's plenty of griffins on the coast somewhere? Another shell? You're not... No, these are my griffins. This isn't even so, a conversation we're going to have. It obviously is. <laughs> Alright, we well still let me end it. it. No. <laughs> That's the first, first time you've seen him a little frustrated since you've been blowing your horn that he threw out the window. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we saved your life and tower and now there is so much no. I understand. Okay. I'm glad you understand. <clears throat> I hate to disappoint you, but no. Uh, hello, uh, hello Shara. My name is uh, Arthur uh, Emerson. I think I came in a bad time. Nay, it's always a bad time here. <laughs> oh, my visits with Zephyros have never been a bad time. It's, it's good oh, to have I'm... you around and... I We're know awkward. that your babies like to play around here. They, well, sometimes a little too much. She looks towards the clutch of eggs. Lass, I have bad news for you. The dragon killed Lunar Beak. He's might touchy about it. I was gonna tell her. Except for us. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, my apologies. Wow, that that is. She bad knows that all the time. <laughs> We're horrible people. <laughs> I just like <laughs> socially <laughs> just the worst conversation ever. <laughs> are you gonna be traveling through these areas or are you gonna be going with Zephyros here? I we're traveling through. We're on our way to Bryn Shander. Bryn Shander? I haven't been up there in a while. Oh, I've never been, but I've been charged with uh, giving some bad news to someone up there, too. I see. Well, I'd, I'd hate to be the bearer of bad news. And I'm sorry to hear about Lunar Beak. So, I... You were very close, that one. Is that Frost looks her? Yeah, yes, I'm... But the eggs are still around. I'm there's a little bit of hope, and Arthur helped me see that. He looks down at Arthur. Well, if you want, you can come into town. We can find you some lodgings. Uh, we have a prisoner. Is that right? I was, yeah, I was wondering what to do with him. How does your local law enforcement deal with uh, troublemakers that bring dragons into towers and breathe fire on griffins? Well, I can't say that that's an everyday occurrence. I, I don't even know how they deal with that, but if you explain but what happened, specific. I'm sure they can pass a fair judgment. I am not the best at explaining, but I'll do what I can. Mayhap one of the laws is better than I am. Mayhap, uh... They attacked you, or they attacked uh, the tower? They attacked the tower. They were going after uh, the flying device, globe thingy. But I think that if they had been successful in destroying it, they probably all would have died in the drink, if you know what I mean. So that would be a real shame. So I... this is a good friend of mine. wouldn't say that everyone feels the same way as I do, but... All our lives are on the line. But uh, he has been, as far as joint school, very hospitable. Well, you just take him up to uh, take him up to the local sheriff, and they can deal with him. All right. Did you want any help with that? I could send someone to pick him up. 
Oh, yeah, I'd be happy to have him off my hands. I've been babysitting him from the rest of my crew for the past couple of days. It's been tiring. Well, I'll send someone up in the next day or two. Uh, thank you much. This one does not let the prisoner even play any games with us. No. Tag. Or chase. Or push over cliff. Nay. There'll be no games with the prisoner. He's to be treated with uh, some modicum of respect and cared for until we can bring him to the law. Yes. All assassins are treated with respect here. Uh, only the ones that we don't kill. <laughs> Look over at the blood stain on the floor where your magic keg pummeled them one into submission. Yeah, I'm like, uh, you know. Well, if uh, if we are in town in a few days and we want to call on you, how do we find you? What was that? If we are in town in a few days and want to call on you, how do we find you? Well, I train old griffins at the local uh, castle. Mm. To find me there. Do you have extras? No, we don't have any extras. No. For training. I'm just kind of like standing behind Thomas so he can't see me. I'm like shaking my head vehemently at her. So he can't see me doing it, but she can see me. We could use extra flying abilities. Nah, I didn't think we needed. We have horses. They're fine. I, I like horses. Well, I can offer you for for a payment. I can get you to Bryn Shander a lot quicker. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I like horses just fine. It would only be uh, 250 gold per. Easy peasy. Very, very much. Easy peasy. So we, we go That's so free. fast. We have free horses. Yes, but also it will take extra time. Time is money. I Thomas, heard it. We have the money. That's the problem. We did not have the money. Of course we have money. Not that much. Wait, how much is that? So it's like, look at my five fingers. See my five fingers? Of course. If, if you punch me now, we will have fight. I didn't want to fight, lad. Okay. Listen. If my five fingers is 250 gold, we have one finger worth. That be all. Not even a whole hand. We have one, the itty bitty finger, the little one. That's all the gold we have compared to all the gold we need. So that wouldn't work. That doesn't yeah. sound like it even come close. Sorry. And it'll take a few yeah. days to train you, make sure that you knew what you were doing before you went out on them. And yeah, we didn't have the money, but I appreciate the offer. Perhaps we use money for other things. How much do you charge for triumvirate? No, nay, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to answer last. It's very confused. Touching in the head and all that. You must forgive my friend. All right. I just wait over here until you guys are done talking. I'm bored. Thank you very much. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm casting gust over at you guys. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I say to her, please don't, don't listen to any words that come out of his mouth. Oh, I've been around long enough to know who and who not to listen to. You don't have to worry I, about me. All right, good on you then. Lass. Would you like a beer for the road? I would rather not fly and drink. Thank Fair enough. Much. No problem. Perhaps later when we look you up in town. It would be nice to see you there. I'll have someone out here in a day or two, like I said. I will be by in a few days after we've taken our full rest. All right, Still. so she yeah. starts uh, saddling her griffin, getting it ready to fly back out. Her and Zephyros talk a little bit about what he's been doing, a little bit about how he met you guys and the things he's seen since the last time they've been here, about Lunar Beak and about the attack. He goes into detail about it. Then after a few short minutes, she ends up taking off and going back to the fire share. You see her headed back towards the cliff face. Sweet. After another day, you will get your long rest. Yay. Yeah.
So everyone gets a long rest. You'll gain half your hit dice back. All your hit points back. You can click the button. I get all my spells correct. Mm -hmm. Yep, and if you want to prepare different spells and new spells, now is the time. Right. I think I might want to check that out really quick. Manage spells. Yeah, everyone that can prepare spells. Is that just now you two? Oh, I had at some point too that I didn't learn, so that's cool. At level four? Yeah. Cool. All of mine stay the same. Well, of course they stay the same. <laughs> non mage. I am I'm doing many magics here. It's just hard I can't use any of them while I'm raging. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You can't cast spells while you're raging. Nope. Maybe I'll actually take a damage cantrip. I think you already have it. You have the AoE one. Uh, yeah. I mean, but it's not, like, super great if they're not right on top of me. There's no range to it, right? So then it's Sacred Flame after that, right? Or Toll of the Dead. Those or are my choices. Sacred Flame is less damage, but it's a dexterity saving throw. And Toll the Dead is possibly more damage if they're already hurt, but it's a wisdom saving throw. It's wisdom? Huh. Yep. What's the target must get a wisdom saving throw? I take a bunch of necrotic damage. I'll take Toll the Dead. What the hell? Sounds good. Uh, and then I'm going to change some of my prepared spells. Let me know when you guys are done preparing spells, and we'll move on. Arthur, let's go instrument shopping. Uh, well, <clears throat> I, I would speak I, up, I, young man. I definitely will, Mr. Thomas. Um, it's just that I'd like to talk to this um cultist uh, real quick. Perhaps we use him like drum. Um, and, uh, actually, no, we're not going to be uh, using him as any kind of Mr. Musical Instrument. Um, I, I, just, I just wanted to. I question him. Um, I, I learned a new technique where I can read his thoughts so he can't hide anything. I already know this technique. Uh, so you can right, tell me you what you're going to do, Arthur, and you can go ahead and start. Uh, so I'd go... And uh, maybe pull the microphone close to your mouth. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. Um, so before we before we uh, question this um, uh, cultist, I, I was just wondering: um, Are there any questions that anybody has uh, to ask him? Mm. Okay. I changed yes. That. Where is the best place to find New Horn? I don't believe he <laughs> knows this. Um, <laughs> what is secret password to fire uh, fire dragon's house? Okay, I'll uh, secret password. We can try to. Perhaps we take that. take his cloak so that you can sneak in there. You are also mage and cultist, right? Um, not not quite. You um, would you would fit in his cloak, Mister Theodore. Um, would you help yes. me question? If you would like me to, I can. Yes. Um, why don't you ask the questions, and I will read his thoughts. Okay. Uh, is there anything anyone in particular would like to know? Uh, it, besides Mr. Thomas, uh, he has enough questions already. So I, I hold up my stubby door fingers. I'm like, one, I'd like to know why he's trying to kill everyone in the castle, the flying castle, why he's trying to kill all of us. Two... I want to know where they're from. And three, I don't know if they'll be back. Okay. Those are the three questions I have for him. Uh, it might be best if uh, just the two of us had a question. I, I trust Theo. He can ask my questions for me. Uh, excellent. So then so, I go over to the cultist, then, I believe. All right, so he's tied up in the back. Um, his hood is pulled down. His head is completely shaved. And he has some uh, 
interesting tribal tattoos that go from his brows all the way to the back of his head in different patterns. He sees you coming. What do you I want? So, uh, I'd like to get some information. Been a while since we've talked last time. Mm -hmm. Looking to see if you've been willing to cooperate. Let us know why you attacked us. Well, and I detect, I cast detect thoughts. All right. The first thing you see is his, it's a weird um, vision that you kind of get as he's thinking and what you're seeing, because what you're getting from him is that he hears a voice in his head. He doesn't actually see who's talking to him. He just hears someone talking to him. And it's a deep and low and powerful voice that's giving him orders. And you can tell that his thoughts are he's doing this because he's ordered to. You don't hear the specific words. You can just feel that sense, everything about it. But what he says is, I'm not sure you're even going to let me live yet. I don't think... I I'm not sure we're going to let you live yet. I think it depends on what you let us know now. I know that game. Um... Is anyone planning on coming back? Will there be a second attempt to take the tower? Maybe. He says maybe, and um, Arthur, you get the sense the same commanding, um, domineering personality that's taking over his thoughts. He doesn't know if that's the case. Perhaps, sir, you might let us know who's in charge of you. He smiles and proudly says, Klauth is in charge of me. And, uh, yeah, he's definitely thinking about Klauth. But in the visions that you're seeing and the things that you see, you don't see Klauth's face. He speaks directly to you? Uh, you wouldn't know that. Only Arthur would know that. Well, he said that Clouth is the one who gives them orders. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking if he speaks directly to him. Yes. Clouth does. And if we're in his lands and by his laws, I'd be released. I don't know. What you think you're going to do with me, or it doesn't really matter. Giants are filth that need to be eradicated from the land. They don't belong in this world. Uh, maybe some giants do. Um, no. But you have attacked a very nice giant here. That doesn't exist. He just managed to trick you with his magic. Well, he managed to not have the barbarian throw you overboard. At least I died Due to quickly. his request. Instead of being bored by you. And his thoughts are pretty accurate to what he says right now. Oh, is there anything else? I mean, uh, Miss Arthur? I can't remember what the others asked me to ask. <laughs> As you're saying that, you <laughs> do get one last thing before the spell ends, which is <clears throat> you get the idea of him thinking about if Clouth ever finds you, he's definitely going to kill you. Hmm. And he's well. kind of reveling in those thoughts. He gets a little smile on his face, not understanding that you can read his thoughts. Mm. 
Well, sir, I can assure you, we'll do everything we can to prevent that from happening. <laughs> prevent what from happening? <laughs> <clears throat> As I walk away, Kaleth killing us. And I'll follow our throat. <laughs> and what were you saying, Thomas? Mm. Before I cut you off, sorry. I was just saying it was a shitty investigation. Oh, you're just being salty. <laughs> just being salty. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to ask him questions. Ah, I forgot what the questions were. What's your name? Okay. <laughs> you you have a dragon? Okay, cool. Yeah, they didn't do a good job. We, we need to practice. Maybe we keep him in practice on him. Nah, there'll be no practice at all. You can interrogate forever until you get good at it. No, please. If at first you don't succeed, tell me what it is like, but also keep trying. Uh, I'm very sorry, gentlemen. I get a little bit nervous um, doing these types of things. Why is it you are afraid of yourself? That sounds like somebody else's job to be afraid of you. You are a powerful mage. Uh, I consider myself to be uh, a knowledgeable mage, uh, perhaps maybe because I've spent <laughs> most of my life in the books, but uh, powerful, no. No, those are there are others with way more power than I am. That I so? Have. They're always, they're always a bigger mage than you. Look at Zephyros. He's bigger than me. But still, I am big mage. You are also big mage. Mm. Yes, well, um, perhaps uh, another time we can discuss my past. But right now, I we do, should get to the city. I Don't do not care about your past. Me? I care about you being strong. I love the past is past. You past. can do nothing about that. No mage is strong enough to reshape past, but you strong enough to reshape future. Yes, uh, those were almost the exact words of Jakad when he convinced me to come on this uh, journey. Did he sound like wise men? Uh, For once, I agree with Thomas. I think he has a point there, lad. Well, Do not be scared of yourself. Like I say, that is somebody else's job. You cannot do your job and somebody else's job at the same time. Uh, th thanks, my friend. I, I will keep that in mind. Hmm. Perhaps I will practice with you, too. I don't know if I can match your strength. No, he, of course you what? cannot. <laughs> you cannot match strength, but you have power. You can do this. Thank you so much for the kind words, Tom. Okay, now block. Oh, I'm gonna swing my fist at him. <laughs> <laughs> Does he block? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> swing him to hit. Got to roll. Choose to dodge if you want. Are you gonna recklessly swing at him? Maybe no. we should have initiative. I don't think it was gonna be an initiative fight. All right. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> so he hits you for five three damage. bludgeoning damage, unless you're hitting him with your staff. Uh, no, no this is unarmed. unarmed. He does five damage with his fist. Oh my God! Oh, you have an eighteen strength. Yep. Yep. So he hits you square in the nose for five bludgeoning damage. <laughs> <laughs> Little mate, you did not block. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You go the mage in the face. You oh, okay. no. I, I said block. block. Is that that is the right word? Correct. You cannot block. He's a wizard. Wizards do not block. Put your, your hand in the way. They block with their face. That's how they know how to do it. <laughs> that makes no sense. But you take punch like man. You can be proud of that. Uh Blood's just pouring out of my nose at the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. Good Morden's Forge. That's a horrible. See, let, 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 let me now look now we can go forth with confidence because that's probably the worst thing that happened to you today. I stopped the bleeding from my face. <laughs> <laughs> do you hear me? Lean back, lad. Lean back. Look up at the ceiling. <laughs> what do we do in town that is worse than that? No. Let's go and be happy. 
for the love that's all that's holy. Uh, let's let's not do that again, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> I don't, says, I don't but his think voice I can is take a little more, more nasally as he's <laughs> definitely broken. <laughs> oh, God. I said I said his nose. <laughs> ah. There How are many lot. hit points do you have? Sleep at all. You have uh, I have 26 max. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like almost half what you have. Yeah, he just took like a fifth of his hit points and damage. In the face. In the face. I thought he would block. Nay, he didn't know how. He's not been trained in martial uh, pursuits. Well, we will practice. Like I said, he does take a punch well. Everybody has plan until you get punched in the face. This is good practice. <laughs> now, come. We will go and buy instruments. I will buy you extra nice one if you like. Uh, I'm okay with the instruments. Maybe I'll go get some vials. Ah, yes. Those vile dragon folk. Now, remember lot. We have a finite amount of funds. So, when you're out there shopping, um, they have Keep in mind that we do not have a lot of gold. Uh, sure. Well, they technically have no gold on them. Unless you have any personal gold. I have I have a lot of silver and copper. So Let no me gold. see. How, how much does that add up to? Currency in GP. Eight gold. So eight gold. I think I still have ten for some reason. I think we gave you your gold back, didn't we? Uh, you gave me ten, or someone gave me ten. I think it was divvied up from one of the last fights. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was from when I took ten. You were just like, here, you were there too. You take ten too. Right. Um, so yeah, that's all you have on your person, and then uh, everything else was in the bag of holding, which Carmen holds. Yeah. So we, we have together in the bag of holding, my gold is in there as well. I just put all the gold that I have in there, 45 group gold. Mm. That is a handy little thing. Hey, what was magic powder I saw? Who has that? Uh, I gave the magic components to Theodore. Arthur. I, oh, Arthur, I mean, Arthur. I figured he could use them well, better than me anyways. But they do crazy things, right? Well, they help him cast his magic. Very good. All right. Do we all go? I uh, let's go into town. Very good. Sweet. So, are you gonna ride into town or walk into town? You could get there in a couple hours if you walk, or a lot less if you ride. I said no we ride. Riding. Yeah. Why not ride? So everyone sure. makes their way along the coastline up towards Fireshare. You are a little southeast of the town, city almost. It's pretty big, actually. And the main attraction of this city is the cliffside that it's been built on and around. You notice as you get closer, there's a many sets of stairs that zigzag their way down the cliffside as if they're carved right into it. There is no wall on the cliffside because there's no need for a wall. And the, the walls on the outside of the city are only about 15 feet high, all made out of stone. And pretty much everything in the city is made out of stone. The gates are open. And people are allowed to pass through without question. As you guys ride your way up to Fireshare, um, they do hail you from atop the gate, but they don't question you. They don't come down and talk to you even. You get into hmm. the city and uh, all the little huts, all the little houses, everything's made out of stone. A lot of them look like squat Eskimo igloos. Some look like large stone teepees, and others are stone, what you think is a pup tent, but much larger in size. Everything's so did, built so the snow will just fall right off. Did she send someone out to get our dude, Ronnie? Uh, not quite yet. She said today or tomorrow. 
Okay, and but I thought we had a couple days left until we finished our long rest. We had one day left. Okay, all right. So I guess we are bringing him into town. You can bring him, or no. you can leave him there. Just tie him up in the area. Yeah, I'll leave him there with the, with the giant. That's fine. Yeah, he's Griffins probably will take care of well him. guarded. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you headed to in Fire Share? First to Musical Emporium, and then to Deshira's house for Triumvirate. <laughs> hey, no Triumvirate. We're going to invite her out for a nice drink, be perfect gentlemen, and then we'll oh. find ourselves a room to stay the night before we leave in the morning, probably. We have a room. We can just use hers already. She already has one. Wait, I cannot hear you. What? Well, she already has one, correct? Has one what now? Mm. Yeah, we cannot stay in her room. There's four of us, and it would not be proper. Sometimes I do not understand you. I the feeling is mutual, lad. Just follow my lead. First, to the music store. Sure. Maybe we all buy drum. Whatever you want, as long as it's not expensive. All right, you can have triangle. We could probably, hey, you know what? We could buy little signal whistles or something. And then we can make music. And also, when when the Theodore is often hiding, he could whistle for us. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Signal whistle, all right. I could get behind that. But uh, we have to talk about music times and when that's appropriate. Wood. So as you're going okay. through the city, you can smell the uh, kilns that are all lit. People are... <laughs> I don't know when to interrupt these conversations. I just all the time. You go all the time. going on until somebody else says something. Right. So it's kind of a your choice. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I like a slow pace. I like you guys to have time to talk. You tell me when it's appropriate to interrupt. <laughs> I want to buy 100 whistles. Oh, lad, we don't have money like that. If they are not so cheap, I will buy them myself. No, no, and please. We can, buy we can have maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a half of 100, and we make them different pitches so I can make music of many kinds. I blow one whistle for one note, move to different whistle for different note. Oh, there's one skill whistle that has multiple notes, like a flute. It will be great. Where is this music store? Maybe we ask, hey, you! And I point at some lady. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's going to go well. that's hanging out her laundry to dry. You, with the bloomers. She looks at you. And someone steps out from their stone house, the man. Can I help you? Yes, perhaps. I hope so. Commerce. Like Way there. to the music symposium. He's Do you have a pipe something? and everyone's talking at the same time, so I can't hear you. <laughs> Is there a market nearby? We need to go buy some goods. You can go to the Troy Market. I'm sure you can I... find something there. Where is it? If you don't mind me asking. He just points. You keep walking that way. You'll or even if you do it. mind. I, okay, that way. Yeah, here we go. Okay, come on, Thomas. Let's go now. Thank you much, sir. Mom. He tips his uh, fur hat. And something you've noticed as you've come further and further north is that um, winter still clings to the ground and clings to the lands. It's we not... need some... Yes, for the cold. Falling out in the spring. What but do you, you mean? Carmen. What's have up? I not felt like you needed to actually put on any warmer clothes or any warmer furs than what you have. You actually oh. haven't really felt cold now that you're thinking about it and you're on the ground and you see all the snow for a while. 
you haven't felt cold. Your hands haven't been cold, or your feet, or your ears, even though you've kept your uh, warm clothes on. Why, it must be my frosty ring. It's very possible. Well, we don't have that luxury, so I suppose we need to find some better furs. Aye. Yes, perhaps I can have new underpants made of warm furs. They never get cold, lad. I don't, but they could feel nice and new. New clothes are very nice. Aye, let's go find some new clothes. Hmm, perhaps, perhaps the fur of beavers or otters. Those Do you not excellent. get cold as a triton? Yeah, uh, he I have resistance to cold. So you would still get cold. Resistance just gives reduces the damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a Triton, I am adapted to even the most extreme ocean depths. You have resistance to cold damage and ignore any of the drawbacks caused by deep underwater environments. He probably okay. doesn't really. I would say cold. that's probably on par with um, what Carmen's feeling is you don't really get cold because when you go deep in the ocean, you get very cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not. Um, Carmen, you do not have resistance to cold that you know of. Right, I'm just not cold. Correct. But yeah, you walk down to the end of this street, past a lot of these short squat houses, which are all pouring smoke out of their stone chimneys, and it's just trails of smoke this entire city, everywhere you look. And there's a lot of hustle and bustle, people moving around the markets. There's a few carriages that looks like they've set up shops straight from their wagons. And you actually see a few that are selling different kinds of furs and warm clothing, jackets and skins. Let's, let's buy some warm clothes for everyone. Yes. So the old what fur is the trader price? there, he looks yeah. like he's not had a shower in many weeks. But he finds uh, all that you would need for the warm environment for a measly two gold for everyone total. I pay him. And you can uh, pick from a many different style, including beaver fur and all other kinds of leathers mm -hmm. and furs. Yes, I take the beaver fur underpants. They have There's lots of warm, of goofy hats. You know, <gasps> the Minnesota hat. Oh, nice. I totally get one. Ear flap? The ear flap hat. I totally get one. I may also take one. Is there one with happy face on it? Like a raccoon? Mm. Maybe it does not make happy face you anymore. You know what? Yeah, actually there is. Uh, one that they've kept the uh, face intact. Oh, yes. Yeah. I put it on. So yours has wolf. the face of a raccoon kind of hanging off the side. <laughs> they have a wolf fur? Yep, they have wolf fur. I'm looking I'll do one of those. I'm looking for something in white. <laughs> okay, they have different that kinds point. of furs like rabbit fur that they've had to piece together. I'll take the rabbit fur one. <laughs> you cover your other white robes which have a bloody red streak straight down the middle for when Thomas broke your nose. <laughs> <laughs> If you know it's prestidigitation, you can scrub the blood out. I don't have prestidigitation. Ooh, mistakes were made, friend. You don't have the best Man. spell in the game? No. The best spell in the game. The best spell in the game. I used it once to scrub somebody's dirty diaper. Mm -hmm. No, that was in place of a dirty diaper. They didn't even need it. Yeah, we just prestidigitated his clothes all the time and cleaned all this muck out of his ass crack. <laughs> it was you when you were old and senile. <laughs> no, we found a baby. Oh, that's right. <laughs> they have all different sorts of markets here, and it's a big trade way where there's different kinds of tobaccos, um, spices, furs, fish. Fish are a big commodity here. Can I get some pipe tobacco on a pipe? Yeah, definitely. Nice. How much will it cost me? It's a good question. Is it even in the player's handbook? Nope. Really? That's gotta be. I don't think so. It might be. 
but I don't know. Trade goods. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll call it a five silver for the pipe and a silver for, you know, a few days worth of, no, probably for like a couple of weeks worth of pipe tobacco. Okay. Cool. I do it. So you'll fit in very well. A lot of people here smoke pipes, so they also smoke uh, little cigarettes. So I'm puffing on my new pipe, feeling pretty awesome. Whoa, signal whistles cost five copper. I buy five of them. You and I give one to each find a us. total of... Three signal whistles. Mm -hmm. In the market at the moment. I buy those three, I guess. All right, pay your one and a half silver. Don't worry about me. I can make whistle sounds. Just do it. Yeah, this is not your kind of environment, Theodore. You're used to the outdoors and getting into the city. I don't think there is an urban... Um, What's that called? Not really. No, the, the urban ranger is what's not a thing feature? here. I forget that feature. I told you well, you'd be able to choose uh, environments on a long rest. Mm -hmm. All right, I suppose I probably would have done that too. Select more tundra area, Nat, uh, natural explorer. Is that what it's called? You have a favored terrain. Favorite uh, terrain. Proficiency bonuses doubled for make. So yeah, you're definitely in the tundra. Tracks. If you go too far north, you'll be in the mountains. But up to Bryn Shander, you're pretty sure it's mostly just tundra. Okay. So you can change yeah, I'll that do too. Tundra. Okay. Okay. And yeah, you guys can look through the player's handbook and buy other things from the city here. If you want. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wanted some vials. Like just glass vials? Yeah, well, to store ink in it if I have a chance. Sure. To get so you can find a handful of vials, different mm -hmm. sizes and shapes. It'll cost you five copper. Hmm. Actually, it'll cost you a couple silver. It's glass. I'm looking for more chalk. Chalk. Yep. There's plenty of chalk. As much as you want. Nice. Well, I, buy I say that with... There is some reason. <laughs> I, I buy a little pouch and enough chalk to make maybe a uh, what's what's a good size like a cantaloupe a cantaloupe sized bag and I fill it with chalk oh Jesus yeah there's enough um, that'll cost you a few gold no well they're each a it's copper 0 0.01 per stick 10 copper makes 1 silver 10 silver makes 1 gold so it would take a hundred sticks to cost a gold. Yeah, let's go five silver. That'll fill the bag. Okay. Making me math. Sunday math. Not good. Remove. And a bag full of chalk. And then I take that bag, I close it up tight, and I smush it into a dust inside. What? <laughs> now I have lots of chalky dust. Takes a while to crush it all together, but eventually you smush it enough without breaking the bag. Now there will be no more invisible bastard air bubbles hitting me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty inspiring thought process with an intelligence of eight. That That's is true. <laughs> I'll give it to I'll give give it me the... this time. That might be mm -hmm. wisdom common sense. Well, it's 10 on that end. It's not much better. <laughs> <clears throat> mm. Okay. So 
If you don't want to buy anything else, where are you going? What are you doing in this town? Uh, let's see. I'll get a couple odds and ends. I'm going to get like uh, a warmer bedroll because it turns out Carmen didn't come with a bedroll, which is kind of weird. Okay. You don't so, need it to be warm. I mean, if we sleep outside, though, it'll be more, uh, more comfortable. Sure. So more cushiony. Yeah. That costs a gold each. Federal, yep. Yeah, if you're looking at the player's handbook, just go ahead and pay for the things and let me know what you're getting. Okay. Theodore, you need anything? I don't believe so. Okay. So you guys spend your gold, you spend some time in the markets, and uh, there's a lot of people that are local here coming through and buying things off of the traders. You can definitely tell who the people are that are not local. They're coming through to sell their wares. And they, a lot of locals come from here, and then they go ahead to the nearest tavern, if you wanted to grace that as well. Hmm. I imagine our dwarf friend will. I. I imagine he will. Might as well get a pint and get a room. He is or... sort of a one joke pony. What was I, the joke? I don't joke, lad. Pints, pints, pints. I, I mean, Al and Spirits is proof that Morden loves us. Mm -hmm. Why would you drink if you have the chance? I'm going to prove that Morden loves everyone soon. Uh, he does mostly, except orcs and goblins and yes. other, you know, filth. Other filth. <laughs> Why do you believe love has anything to do with uh, God, Morden, and Ale? Pardon, I don't think I understand the nature of your question. Well, I don't understand the nature of your your uh, beliefs either. I uh, and suppose now we talk about religion, I uh, sure. <laughs> no one else is doing anything. I think we talk about religion and be sure to alienate the remainder of our viewers. <laughs> For this, I'm going, drink. I'm, I'm, I'm going to need many drinks. It's either this or we chase down the Shara. And have other joking conversation. Triumvirates and whatnot. Please, no. Listen, lad. The triumvirate thing, it's not uh, its not really something that we get into much around here. You don't really do the three, sir. Uh, no. Dwarves are more monogamous, mostly. And uh, have long-lasting relationships with meaning. Why I'm does... definitely finding another chair. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to sit with them? Uh, if they're talking about this, I'll find my own way. <laughs> sure, uh, give me a perception check. Hmm. Theodore. Oh, I did that as disadvantage. That's fine. We'll take the first one. So 15 is not too bad. You decide to move away from them while they're talking about or not talking about this or trying not to. And mm -hmm. you hear a couple of the guys in the back. A lot of it's local talk. People are talking about their day-to-day -day business. But you hear one conversation in particular from a dwarf who you look back and he looks like a rugged traveler. So did you hear that? Up in the north, there's a giant roaming the lands. He's fighting other giants. He's fighting for the small folk, fighting for us. The other guy says, no, I, are you sure? I, I seen it myself. I was about to go into town, but the giants were fighting amongst each other. I saw him swing his enormous axe and cut one in two. I turned right around. I came right back here. I didn't want to be out there no longer. And they laugh while they're talking and taking a drink. That's the uh, 
meat of their conversation, they start going into other things. Okay. I'll go back to the group and... Hey, there's rumors going around about uh, a giant that is fighting other giants. Hey, Teddy, do you always pretend that more meaning is only with one thing? Or do you sometimes have more than one? I walk away again. <laughs> you walk Jesus, away. they can talk about this stuff for so long. <laughs> yeah, spend your uh, five copper for ale and a pleasant meal. You I'll pay for everybody. Okay. So, two silver. And you go with them, Arthur? Um, yeah. <laughs> so Arthur's always in the background with his nose in the book instead of um, participating in this awkward conversation. And you can go ahead and pass the night or do other things if you want. I mean, I'll probably at some point before the night passes. I'm gonna, what's her? What's the dwarf's name again? What's it? Dashara. Yeah, Dashara, the Griffin Rider. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I'll go. Uh, I'll try to slip away at some point, maybe under the pretense of using the bathroom, and then just go and invite her out for a drink. But I'm gonna try really hard not to bring Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and roll a deception check. Oh fuck! Against his passive perception <laughs> of ten. Uh, My passive, oh yeah, passive perception is actually twelve. Oh, he's trained in it. Holy shit. I pulled it off. You actually <laughs> convince him that you're going to go out and you'll be back shortly. So, yeah, sure. No suspicion. <laughs> nice. And then I simply sneak away. Dup, 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 dup. You slip away and you head towards the castle, which is built right along the cliffside. And you can pretty much find it easily because. Every once in a while you'll see a griffin flying to or from the griffin towers in this castle. And this castle is made up of about seven different sized towers all built along it, alongside it. Okay. How much do you want to go into it? Do you want to go through the whole thing or you want to just uh, make a few rolls and see how you do? I mean, I'm not trying to pick her up. I really am just trying to take her out for a drink and like talk about where she's from and where I'm from and just have like a, you know, a pretty neutral conversation about Dorvin shit, whatever that's all about. And then be off for the evening. I'm not trying to get laid. Sweet. Mm. So go ahead and give me a persuasion roll. <laughs> so bad. We'll do best two out of three. Another skill check. Oh, God. One, two, three. Mm. <laughs> Oops, I rolled four rocks. So the first three, 13, 16, 0. Nope, 13 was your deception. So 16 oh, and 6. Zero, 6. Still, it could have been worse. Yeah, you have a pretty neutral conversation. Um, you learn that she's been doing this for a long time. Uh, she took over from her father. And that's there's not much to your conversation. Dwarf shit. Yeah. I think you had said dwarf shit. <laughs> yep. Talk about dwarf shit. And then I'm and then I wish her a pleasant evening. I'll pay for the drinks, so whatever that's gonna cost me. Uh eleven go another yeah. couple of silver. Okay, so I'll just you know, whatever, I pay another couple of silver. And he then he definitely ditched you, Thomas. Yes. You can tell after about ten minutes, because when you went to the bathrooms to find him, he was not there. Mm-hmm. I yeah, go and he didn't blow his whistle. I go and find theater. <laughs> Did not blow my whistle. <laughs> Mr. Teddy, I believe Carmen has been abducted. <laughs> and what makes you think that? He went to the bathroom, and all I found there was terrible stain and smell. <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't him? It may have begun that way, but he was not in there. Hmm. Come. Also, where is this small mage? He is now brave. We can go find him. He is now brave. <laughs> uh, he's over there. He's always got his nose in the book. All right, so I 
slap my hand down on the table. Arthur! Who is not actually here right now. Arthur! Yeah, I think Matt. Matt's actually not here. You are so deaf. All right, Teddy, go. We, how do we find him? Can you perhaps uh, track him with your smell or something? Oh, God. Is that what you do? Don't fight me. Uh, I will lead him around in the woods for about 30 minutes. <laughs> or try to. There's no woods on the coast. We oh, that's him. right. I'll leave him outside of town and walk around outside of town. You guys make you the following the walls. I'll I'll look for footprints so it looks like I'm actually looking for him, but Okay. So everyone looks as Arthur. Good man. Yeah. Arthur, Arthur is back. Oh, Arthur is back. Now Good. it is. Uh they ditched you. You're now alone in the bar, Arthur. Yes. <laughs> totally you fine. Lo- you look for your book and we're all gone. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I have a passive perception of 14, so I probably saw the dwarf slink out. Yup. You did, actually, because my deception is only 13, so you watched mm-hmm. me. So that's how the rest of your night passes. One what? thing you did get, Carmen, mm-hmm. is before your conversation ends with the Shara, she says, if you ever need to, you can come back here. I'll give you a discount on the lessons. Oh, thank you much. I appreciate it. <laughs> The offer, and mayhap someday when I'm done up in Bryn Shander, I'll come back by this way, and uh, you can teach me how to ride a griffin. All right, it'll still cost you, but I'll give you the friend's discount. Well, I appreciate that much. Of course, there's got to be some sort of commerce involved, or else you wouldn't make your living. So I understand. I. Well, that's been lovely. I'm gonna turn in for the night. Well, have a good evening, and thank you for your company. She slams the rest of her drink like a champ, slams it on the counter, and walks out. As she walks out, it's mostly dwarves in this bar that she brought you to. Everyone gives a good cheer whenever someone slams a drink. So you can spend the rest of your night here, or you can go back and find your friends. Or we can just pass the night. I probably have another drink or two and then leave to my friends. Okay. Surprise, we're not there. (laughs) That's fucking (laughs) right. Eventually, you will all meet back up together once again. Yeah, I'll bring him back to the bar after either I feel like he's getting suspicious or we uh, uh, go past enough time, I think. so. Sure. I was suspicious as soon as you did not bring your bow and arrow. So one, oh, hour, my bone arrow. one arrow, hour, and you make it back to the bar together. And he's uh, there? No, but he'll show up about another half hour. Ah, uh, okay. Not convinced. Mm. Hey, Interesting. I told you he was not here. I do not know why you are such a good tracker. Sometime, well, the footprints but now... lead back here. So... Of course they do. That's when we arrived in the first place. Oh, is that when those footprints were from? Oh my gosh, you are supposed to be the expert. <laughs> if I don't know, you seem to have a pretty good eye for it on your own. <laughs> what if a <our> dwarf <laughs> kidnapped? This might fall on you. We will have to teach you in the ways of the mage. So you can magically find folk. Mm, yes. I'll work on that. Hmm. Your your lack of commitment to our friend is disturbing. I walk out of the bar. I mean, at some point, I show back up. And I won't be there. Okay. Sweet. Well, I, I'm afraid to ask. What are you doing? I'm looking for my abducted friend. Uh, you don't... <laughs> oh, God. This is ridiculous. You don't find him. not like you. In 30 minutes, you find him back at the bar. See, I told you he's back here. Hi, lad. How are you? I see you suspiciously coming back to the bar from the bathroom outside of the bar. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
You do not smell like the bathroom in there. No, I went on a little walk. I had to clear my mind. Had a smoke and walked about town. Oh. You know, found a Dorvin bar, had a few pints like I do, and then I come back. If you leave, blow on signal whistle. Tell us you are leaving. That uh, way I do not spend an hour and a half looking for you outside. I could have been drinking too. Spent an hour and a half looking for me. Yes, you were gone for a long time. You said bathroom, then were abducted. Ah, my little door and heart is warmed. Thomas, you're a good lad. A bit daft, but good in your heart. I poke and him I, in. I push the whistle into his hand. Blow whistle. I will blow a whistle if I leave. And for now, let's have another drink together. I'm like kind of a rosy cheeked and not necessarily. You're allowed to leave. You do not need babysitter, but do not make me chase you across countryside. I uh, Next time I will let you know. Here, uh, have a drink on me. Very good. Arthur looks up. It's like they never left. Yeah, he didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so no, I'm just looking back. through my spell book. Okay. At the moment. So you all pass the night. You can take a short rest if you need it. Probably don't at this point. Mm -mm. Actually, um, Arthur spent a spell, so you could um, use your arcane yep. recovery if you want. I'm going to do that. Your horses are stabled. It'll cost you a total of uh, two gold to stable and in for everyone. Uh, okay. Night gold. Boop. Got it. What is what is goal here? Or do we continue on? Hey, okay, we continue on in the morning. Spend the night and then leave for Bryn Chandra first thing. All right, so the night passes. Sun rises. It's a beautiful, uh, light snowing day. There's just a light snowfall. And you can pack up your horses, get everything ready, and head on out towards Ten Trail, which is the trail that's going to go from Fire Shear on the coast through the uh, tundra up to Bryn Shander. Your next stop would be Hundlestone if you choose to go to that city. Now, do we know like where the Clouth and the edge of the Clouth and Vale is? Yeah, you have a good suspicion that if you head off the path to the east, you'll be in the Clouth and Vale, and okay. wouldn't be a good idea to go there. Yeah, we we're avoiding that area. Yep. But most people just say to stick to the paths, stick to the roads. Cool. So we do that. We need to have a... And that's and a... I... Do you have rations? Do you have food? I think I have rations, but we don't need them as long as steel's around. I'm about to one more, but that was it. I have 15 days of rations. Okay. That's 30 pounds worth of food. 30 <clears> pounds <throat> worth of food? Holy crap. That's what 15 rations. It's two pounds of ration. Wow. That's some dense fucking food. <laughs> yeah, that's dwarf <laughs> rations. It's like dried meat and cheese and like super dense bread or something. There's a little ale cask with each ration. Dwarven MRE. You can tell that the winter still. Uh... It's still winter in the north here. The ground is barren of most bushes and flora. There's a few scrawny shrubs that cling to life here on the ground. Um, travel yeah. is light. You pass by maybe a couple people on your way to Hundles, Hundlestone. There's not a lot of people that come through this way. Oh, be right back. Carmen <laughs> goes to take a leak. I do not believe you. <laughs> <laughs> and I do give Carmen and Arthur signal whistles. Okay. So, so you guys can add them into your equipment. If you need to, you can tweet tweet at me. Give you a tweet. 
What's yeah, your, me. What's your handle? Sorry. Hashtag big mage. Big mage. Be more like medium mage at this point. Biggest mage ever. I will be greatest. Yeah, the two uh, traveling caravans that you pass by are made up of a more than one wagon and a few guards with them. They're selling mostly the same things that you found in the market, different kinds of trade goods. How how long is it in between um like seeing Fire those guys? Yeah. It's gonna be three days travel from Fire Share to Hundlestone if you keep up a good pace. So I will buy an extra couple rations from the merchants. Okay. Because I have enough for a few days, but want a few more. And maybe they have different flavors. Yeah. There's different dried meats and uh, salted meats. And mostly just meats. Boring. But maybe they have bald eagle. Probably. Tastes very good. Baby seal. I'm sure there's some. Actually, it's more like coming from fire shares where all the baby seal is. Mm -hmm. Whale meat. Nice and fatty. Wait, what are we talking about? They also Picking have up more of, um, oh. trinkets Traveling that emerging. are well decorated, like scrimshaw kind of trinkets. Wait, what is scrimshaw? Like a uh, carved Hashtag. bone. Carved of bone? Or tusks, things like that. Do you have flute Ooh, horn from noises? Let's find out. Playing the old bone flute. Yeah, huh? they got a something they carved out of bone that can substitute as a flute. It doesn't. It's not as varied, but it has a few like different a notes. Recorder. Yeah, yes. it's more like that. I take it. That'll be actually two gold if you want. It. What? It's well designed. It is not that well designed. It is broken. Mm -hmm. hey, here, look, it's my gift for you for leaving at the bar. So I'll just pay the two gold. That is fine. Here you go, two gold. All right, good enough. Yeah, we're done. Thank you. You're a crap negotiator, but very well. Take it. You, I point at the merchants. You're very lucky, my friend. Is generous. I right, we're all lucky. So so lucky. Let's keep moving. <laughs> yep, and you keep moving. <laughs> I play. I learned to play Yankee Doodle. Oh, give me a performance check. Okay. Are you trained in it? No. No. Not. <laughs> I, I, every somewhere. <laughs> so bad. So Yankee with that natural one, down. it's worse so. than when he had a single note. Yeah, at least ones are all over the place. Yeah. Uh, he, he Morgan. has no idea what he's doing. Sometimes he's just... It's not even a song. It's not even... I'm humming the tune while I just blow through the whistle. So, like, and randomly throwing my fingers around. So the hum is the real tune, but the whistles are just random all over the place. He's also just dousing the thing in saliva. It's nasty. Oh, God. I told you this broken and not worth two gold, but you are quick to part with your money. Oh, uh, I should not have paid for that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Dodo. Went to town. Alright, 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 alright. That's enough. We get Trust it. it. <laughs> the cats will start howling soon. Oh, yeah. Viewers leaving. They're all hiding under <laughs> the bed right now. <laughs> Give me a perception oh. check, Theodore. 
Uh, let's see. I'm like, you're worse with that thing than an elf with a hammer. Not my natural horn. Does not make proper sound. But we can see. My passive is 14. <laughs> I know, I wouldn't ask for a perception check. <laughs> in that case. And you guys continue on to Hundlestone. It's a pretty boring travel few days, especially with this whistle going, because Thomas has not let up. It's awful. Unless you actually tell him to, I don't know if he's going to. Yeah, I tell him to. I say, I'm getting oh, much better, see? You're worse than the Guinness. Leave it be. No, you're getting much better. Practice make perfect. Yeah, he oh, had a few God. good notes here and there, and he's piecing together, but he still doesn't really know what he's doing. No, definitely is, scouting ahead. <laughs> like, like Arthur taking punch to the face. First practice is rather messy. Oh, yeah, it's but like it's, well, it's, was time. it's fucking horrible. Please stop. Seventeen. It's not fucking horrible anymore. Oh, I'm killing it. It's getting better. It's getting bad. Uh, at least it's not as bad as when you started. It was horrible then. Well, yes. It is brand new instrument. And also, it is broken. It does not make proper noise. Uh, it's not broken. You just don't know how to play it. On the Ten Trail Path, as you're coming up to Hundleston, you can tell here is where the ground has been carved more by travel, people coming and going. Um... People must, there's another couple paths that branch off from here towards different uh, places to the west. Nothing going off to the east. Not surprising since that's the Clouth and Vale. And uh, the trees that are um, still growing don't have leaves on them and they're very sparse in between. But you're coming up to more of small hills and mountains area as you get nearer Hundlestone. And you can see the city from far off. It clings to the base of the mountain. And it's not a very big city. But if you wanted to, you could just bypass it on your way to Bryn Shander. Or you could divert your path for like a 20 minute walk to Hundlestone if you choose. And get the much better sleep. I say, I say we keep going. Save time. I'm in the preference of not stopping as well. Is it not? It, after three nights of so called camping, just sleeping on the road, you do not want a bed? Comfort of warm bed? I prefer places with less people. It tends to be less troublesome. Well, I'm just thinking of completing the task that I was set, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't mind the cold. I think it's the ring I have on. Must be doing something to blunt the effects of the weather. Mr. Arthur, how warm are you feeling? Do you not want the comforts of warm fireplace, hearth, hot meal, beer? I'll be uh, siding with the majority here. Ah, uh, the coward's way out. Voting. We have enough beer to make the journey. We have no ham. I mean, beer goes great with beer. It didn't need ham. Useless calories. What? You do not need muscles like these from drinking beer. I have muscles aplenty, and mostly that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> you have muscles. Of course you do. I do have muscles. Muscles from carrying beer, not from drinking filth. Yeah. What? Did you just call my beer filth? It tastes like inside the crack. Oh no! You did it. <laughs> Look, you big We've been out in the cold three days on stupid road. We could use break. We all getting on each other's nerves. I could use ale that does not taste like diarrhea. Numbs us fighting words. You best take it back. Perhaps I will if we go to get nice warm ham. Fuck you. I 
I just sit there and kind of wait. I'm just staring at you. <laughs> We're both just staring at each other. <laughs> I am obviously super pissed. Theodore and I are just kind of looking awkward. <laughs> they stop in the middle of the path. I can't believe you called my earl shite. I thought we were friends, Thomas. No, but you're just a mean fuck. It is brave of you to drink such things. We are friends. Not often will someone survive muddy water for so long. I, there's like one tear rolling down my door face. Come, <laughs> perhaps we can we can refresh. I want warm ham in the rug, a rug to sleep on. I didn't care what you want, you hateful fuck. And you are nearly out of that ale. You will need to refill it. I'll lean over to Arthur. So what do you think the chances are they actually just start fighting? Uh, I would say um, pretty good at the moment. Come on. Let's not take detour into slow travel. Once refreshed, all things better. You can't insult a man's owl and then expect him to go anywhere with you. I'm pushing off. I didn't care what the fuck you think. So, Matt, pull the mic closer. Alex, pull the mic a little away. Oh, Who's doing God. the heavy breathing? Is that better? Better. Okay. So, are you um, just standing there, fighting, arguing? Uh, Set such sure. curve. Yeah, we're standing at the fork in the road. Come. I thought Come. we were friends. Friends yes. don't think about friends, Al. You obviously do not know nothing but a friendship. You're just a big blue doff pretend wizard. <laughs> you obviously know nothing about ale if you think that is what's worth fighting about here. No, we're fighting about the fact that you're just a mean fuck. What if you were leaking all of your ale out and needed to refill it and repair your cask? Then that's what I would do. Perhaps in the town? And I, I start walking over to Carvin. You start walking towards me? Yeah. With okay. ill intent. With ill intent? <laughs> I equip my shield. All right. <laughs> I equip my shield. <laughs> I get out my hammer. I'm like, you mean fuck. You want to pay? Fine, we'll do this. No, I, did, I don't want any part of you. It is just that your barrel is leaking. If you touch my barrel, I'm beat the shit out of you. No offense, but your shit is Where? in the barrel. Yeah, don't touch the barrel. You stay the fuck away from my barrel. Swear to God. <laughs> and all the gods. Morden and McGlooby at the same. I'll beat you stupid if you touch that barrel. You don't want anything else, so you leave the fuck alone. Did you just swear by goblin god? By all the gods. Everyone. Whoever's looking. Do you Come continue? to town. We will make full night's rest. And no one will touch your crate. I just give him like the squinty hate look. Do you stop your pace towards him, Thomas? Mm -hmm. Okay. You let me know if we need to roll initiative at any point. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that a dwarf will roll initiative on. That's right. <laughs> Salted my fucking ale. It's the one thing my character does. <laughs> well, you will get better with more practice. Oh, I swear to gods. <laughs> it is like improving song. See, it gets better with time. Your ale will be one day strong. Yeah, I like your magic. Perhaps. Mm. All right. 
I, I'm starting to think about the fact that arguing with him is like arguing with the wind or pissing uphill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just that town. We're going to go on. This is last chance at town. There's another chance at town we get to Bryn Shander, which is where we're trying to go. Perhaps. It is bedtime, though. We is sleep it? We sleep next to the town or in town. Uh, you could probably travel on a few more hours. I'm going on. I don't give a fuck. At this point, I'm like Dwarven Stubborn Pissed. I'm not doing if, it. If you were any saltier, you could make excellent ham. And ham is what I wanted. I just start riding past him. Mm. It's a good thing you guys don't share a horse. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <Be> hilarious. <laughs> All right. I just walk. I go to. Okay. But I just talk for the next three days about why we didn't stop at the town. <laughs> oh, no. Got it. So. That is glorious in, in town. Carmen it takes the lead. Ale and ham for us. And I don't give him any more ale. Is <laughs> delicious ale to drink and doesn't taste like it does stink. Oh my god, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. So yeah, you travel on for a few more hours before making camp. Carmen in the lead, seething, angry. Arthur probably in the back, reading or avoiding conflict. Thomas Come on. singing and being distracting us all out. Theodore, what are you doing? Uh, Probably still scouting ahead a little bit. Uh, not too far, though, because I do want to be there to witness the uh, initiative roll if it happens. If we break out the <laughs> So you'll have to keep pace a little faster than Carmen to get ahead of him. And the few hours pass before you can make camp again. Or before you decide to make camp. Do you actually make camp or do you just lay a bedroll down on the path and fall asleep? I mean, probably we should stay on the path, right? Yeah, I was thinking maybe I could find a I mean, that's but in the your... path that has like a, a side where you can pull away and do decent enough. Oh, what in the path? A, uh, like a, a place where you can pull off if you're oh. in a wagon or something. Let's do it, yeah. So you're coming up to smaller like mountains Hundle. that are maybe 20 minutes away to the west and east where the slopes are low and if you go to the ones in the west it would give you a little protection from the winds okay sounds like a good option but there's no real like rest stop yeah, i'm just looking more for open space sure <laughs> we're gonna actually lay things down or if there's a spot that looks like natural cover you use that yeah, there's a few rocky outcroppings at the base of this mountain you find that has some decent protection. There might be something better on your path. Go ahead and give me a survival roll. Oh, here. Survival of 23. So that was your first option, but going on not too much further, you see that there's the same kind of outcroppings, but they actually curl up and over and form somewhat of a pocket cave. Not nice. like an actual cave through the mountains, but more like just an enclosure of rock that would give you a lot more protection. Oh, this is like the goblins in, in uh, The Hobbit. I hope not. <laughs> or you fall through the floor. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, never to be stuff. seen again. Goblin yeah. after shadows. I give Carmen a little bit of the stink eye as I'm laying laying out my things. Now, can I just say out of game for the record? G, thanks for not beating the shit out of me right there. I appreciate that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that would complicate the rest of the trip. <laughs> <laughs> he might beat you in a fight, but I feel like you got more friends on your side. I mean, maybe. Probably. I was going to make Carmen uh, be the instigator, so it would have complicated matters. I thought, I thought you were going to make him block. We've already seen you punch one person. <laughs> I thought you were going to come punch a hole in my keg. I was like, no, fuck that. <laughs> the keg was going to go down. <laughs> uh, uh, then there would have been a fight. <laughs> so you oh, guys yeah. settle in this little uh, somewhat of a cave. It's not very deep. It only goes back approximately 25 feet. But there's enough room for everyone to lay everything out. Um you don't have to start a fire, but you could. It is pretty chilly up in the north, and if you're not Carmen or Thomas, your feet almost never stay warm or get warm in the cold, unless you, like, put them out by a fire and put everything out to dry. But travel's I been figure. pretty decent because Theodore has um, been leading you well through the tundra, and you get mm -hmm. that extra... Nothing's difficult terrain, I think. Is that correct? With favor mm -hmm. terrain? Yep. And you can double your travel time, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, let me look it up here quick. Like, I think it doubles. Sure double. After an hour of travel, you can double your uh, travel Over time. Mm -hmm. uh, difficult terrain doesn't slow your travel. Can't get lost except by magical means. Uh... Uh, remain alert to danger. Can move stealthily at a normal pace of traveling alone. Yep. In foraging, you find twice as much food. Tracking other creatures, you learn their exact numbers, their size, and how long ago they passed through. Okay. Can you link so it for me? Once you're in the I, house, everything. I can it? try. I don't know how often it. <laughs> no. Yeah, it just does works. that. I don't know why that stopped working for me. It might be just this character, because it's uh, mm -hmm. not under Arcana or something. Oh, sure, because it's kind of homebrew -y. Uh No, Gloomstalker no, is not homebrew. From... Oh, is it? Is that right. Yes. I don't know. I just know there are a lot of options for Archer, or Ranger, rather. So I was like, I don't know if this is the one or not. It's all right. I can look it up. Weird. Yeah, everything you link just comes with, like, this is what it is, but it has no description. Everything everyone else links mm -hmm. works. Don't know. Yeah, why. and I've done it for other characters where it links fine, but for some reason this character. I wonder if there's some option that's not clicked or something or declicked somewhere. Maybe in your one, uh, Beyond 20 options, there might be something. In yeah, the I looked in there, too. Natural Explorer. Okay, perfect. So you guys set up camp, settle down for the night. Give me a perception check. Okay. Everyone. Everyone's fine. I'm not bad at perception. Oh, looks like I'm the best at perception. <laughs> That's sad. You do so great. Nope. Yeah. What are your plans for the night? Are you going to take watch? Are you going to take shifts? We probably should take watch, right? I'll definitely take watch when it's uh, darker out. So more we towards the we do not the need to take watch if we stay in Hundlestone. I don't I think. It's still a good idea to take watch. <laughs> Just quiet. I ignore the fuck out of him. <laughs> like, I We're hear Strong in with nice strong walls. We Take are safe from harm and safe from 
wolves. He says, a wolf howls in the distance. In the Mundle Stone. And we sleep all night and are safe from harm. So who's taking first watch? <laughs> I'd be interested in taking second watch. Yeah, I may have Arthur take the first watch because he cannot see in the dark. So, well, there's still some light, perhaps. Arthur, uh, you take There's the no light left. You pushed oh, on okay. a little bit extra. It is now completely dark. Well, then I'll take oh, the first okay. watch. I'll stay up while you. The rest of you got some short eye. And then I'll switch off with you, Woodsman. And you can take second. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So everyone beds down for the night. I'm assuming everyone falls asleep at some point. Um, unless you want to roll for the exhaustion tables. It's awful. Don't stay up and don't push oh. on. It's the worst thing in the world in this game. <laughs> yeah, exhaustion's right there swimming. It's right up there with swimming. Carmen, you're the only one left awake. Uh, what are you I'll doing for watch? I'll smoke my pipe and I'll kind of like walk around the perimeter of whatever camp we have. It's not a very big camp. Like I said, it's just a little pocket cave. It's almost as if it juts up and out of the ground itself and forms this cave. It's like a small hill with an open face mm -hmm. followed inside. And you walk around that, the walk up to the top. You could even go to the very top of this uh, form formation. And stand on it, kind of like at the top of an igloo. Well, there's one way in and one way out, right? Yep, there's only one way in, but it's not very big. I'll just sit at the opening then, so if something wants to come in, it has to get past me. Okay, and the opening's about 20 feet wide. The whole width of the cave that extends backwards. Okay, I'll just, yeah, I'll lean up against one of the walls and smoke my pipe and keep an eye out. Okay. Go ahead and... Give me a perception check. Uh, let's see. Boop. 17. Nice. So you don't see anything in particular, but you do hear the sounds of movement off in the distance. It is completely pitch black dark, but you can hear creatures moving across the path. Shuffling close to not us or not quickly. Close. This is the first sense you get of it, so you can't, you don't think it's that close. You're listening intently, and there's no other noises in the nighttime except the few uh, howls of a wolf and snow falling from branches of trees onto the ground. Okay, I mean, so it's easy I to pick out sounds from very far away. I can see kind of okay in the dark, so I'll just keep an ear out and see if things get closer. Yep, you can normally see kind of okay in dim light. However, it's been a light snowfall pretty much since you left. Oh, so it's kind of obscuring my vision it's for how far It's obscuring all the light, so there's no stars or no moon that you can see because of this. I mean, even no light, I treat like dim light. So I can see a little bit. Up to 60 feet. Still, yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. So You would think this is probably way further than 60 feet. Oh, that's fine. Okay. I'll keep smoking and keep listening and see if it gets closer. I mean, the good thing is if there's snow, then there's like the crunchy, crunchy snow stuff. Oh, yeah, noise. and that's what you hear. But now you can pick it out. You're listening to it intently for this specific noise, and it's getting louder. And it sounds like there are many creatures moving okay Psst. woodsman hi yes my turn no i hear something come listen there's something out there in the snow yes there's always something out there in the snow no i mean it's coming closer there's many okay. somethings following our tracks hmm Should we light a torch or something? I believe that would be a bad idea. Make it so that it could see us a lot better if it was trying to find us. Well, 
I don't think that it's having a div any difficulty. It seems to be coming right here to the cave. Shh, listen. So you start listening as he quiets you. And yeah, you hear the same sounds. As they're coming closer, you can now pick out different sounds. The sound of metal clinging against metal. The sound of the choice of armor moving, creaking. The sounds of muffled voices or voices from far away. Can we tell what kind of language they're speaking? No, not not right now. Perhaps best quiet. See if they pass by. All right. I extinguish my pipe so it doesn't give us away. You I equip my shield. Tap your pipe out on the rock. You equip your shield, of course. And the more you listen, the more you can hear. You actually hear someone now talking. It sounds like they're maybe where you veered off the path into this mountainside cave. You can tell they're speaking some kind of language. Does anyone speak orc? I speak orc. So you can understand what they're saying. The night's so clear, the voice trails all the way up to you and you catch bits and pieces of it. I they, I think it went right here. Look, see those? You kind of miss pieces of the conversation. Yeah, maybe not, not too long ago. Make sure kind of miss another piece of it and then bring Delgath <laughs> and that's it they start shuffling the talking stops but it sounds like the shuffling um, is all moving up to this location there's no one moving on no one leaving from where they were at so I tell them that they're orcs and they're coming this way. They've caught our scent. There's going to be a fight. Fuck. Should we prepare an ambush. We should have stayed in Hundlestone. God damn it. God have done it. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> wrong. <laughs> so you I wake everyone up, a... or you're just telling this to uh, Theodore? Wake up our pals. It's time for a maybe. Rocket. Maybe let the big one sleep until. Ready. Nay. That'd be not fair to him. As much as he's a ugly, hateful son of a bitch. Okay, you wake them up. I'm gonna go off about a hundred or let's see the item did fine. I wanna set that up. I have a hunting trap. Nice. A saw to set that up like sounds like a bear trap. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. DC I want to 13 set that deck up. save, and you're going to set it up um, near your area? Uh, kind of in the entrance of our area, yeah. Just make sure that... When I say entrance, I'm thinking maybe like 20 or 30 feet away from it, so someone coming to our area would likely step on it. Okay. I'd like to try to... There's some sounds. Uh, yeah, I get it, so it looks like it's not an obvious trap. Sure. Okay, so I wake like up the other two. Uh, uh, what? I put my hand over your mouth. I'm like, all right, so I'm only going to say this ever once in my life, but you were right. There's orcs coming up to the cave. We should have stayed in Hundlestone. All right, are you happy? Fuck, wake up. There's about to be a fight. Ah, yes, this is good. I, keep, I slap my hand over your mouth. I'm like, don't talk. Shut the fuck up. Oh, you know. That's right. And get to fight. Shh, quiet. Shut the fuck up. Yes, of course. Alright, I go and wake up. <laughs> Arthur. Art, wake up. Oh, uh, yeah, hey, what is it, Mr. Connor? There's goblins, or there's orcs coming. There's going to be a fight. Stay in the box. Perchance, maybe they're friendly. 
No, son, they're orcs, I said. <laughs> I didn't think you understand. Stay in the back and throw fire when you see them. Uh, we'll do. <clears throat> okay, I move back up to the mouth of the cave, and I stand in the middle. Okay. Hammer in hand, shield equipped. Got it. You hear the sound of them moving. You've been as quiet as you can be. You see Theodore move up. He puts his trap in the snow. He starts um, stretching it out the jaws so they'll snap around someone that walks over it and clicks a lock that puts the pressure plate into place. Ooh. Where are you going from there, Theodore? Uh, I'm going to uh, see if I can... Uh, maybe like 20 feet away kind of behind the cave so that I don't have line of sight but I could look over and shoot from over top maybe so like if you think of it like it's an open faced igloo in a large size you mm -hmm. could stay at that back corner where you could climb up to the top of the igloo shoot yeah, down that's and climb back thinking. down and it's yeah. not as steep the whole way. It'll be pretty easy to climb up and down that each round mm -hmm. without being difficult terrain. Or even if I could just go prone on top of something that looks like it'd be difficult to scale up top. I don't know. It's not too difficult to scale up here. And like I said, it's they're low sloping mountains. There's no... There's not a lot of trees out. There's not a lot of terrain that would um, block your path or give uh, cover. But you can definitely go prone on top of it. Just if someone gets to that, it won't be hard to get to you. So I can hear the orcs coming up. Well, I'm invisible right now, so to anyone who has dark vision. Yeah. Oh. I... So I um, can maybe we... figure out that I'm up there but yeah he was abducted it would no, be like no. fighting the um invisible stalker exactly um so did we see you set up the trap though i did okay technically you didn't oh oh because he's invisible because i always forget about the gloom stalker's ability yeah. where he is basically treated as invisible as long as there's no light and tonight there's no light Arthur yeah, the, is blind. The woodsman's good. He knows what he's doing. He's done this sort of thing before. Now, should we give him the one chance to move on? Mm. I must tell you that I cannot see anything at all, and neither can Arthur. Well, then you light a torch, and I'll announce that we're here. Maybe maybe a small candle. I just light some something and then I'm i yell gonna, does anyone or, have yeah. a candle i have candles <laughs> i have lots of them yeah, i have all I sorts of useful things like candles and bags full of chalk dust and signal so, whistles that's awesome. <laughs> i yell out an orc so i'm gonna set up the two candles outside the cave so, so candles, that i think they have a very low light level you should five. actually read it it might be five ten five and additional five um so let me see my torches torch is 2040 it'll be much easier to see if you set a torch down yeah so they're coming for us so i'm gonna set up two torches one on each side of the entrance to the cave so that no light is going in and doesn't reveal arthur but he'll be able to see the battlefield yeah that's fair Okay, so I say an orc, Oi, move on, you green pasty fucks. There's already somebody here. No room for you tonight. As you start yelling, you hear the shuffling stop. And you hear that same voice that was talking. I smell dwarf. <laughs> I he knows you smell. <laughs> Aye, that you do. And there'll be no room for orcs up here. Not tonight. So go find someplace else to sleep off the cold. You're no welcome. 
You can hear the shuffling of feet slowly moving. <laughs> he says something in Orcish that you actually do understand. He goes, Yo, go that way. You, you go that way. You do I, that way. If you're you going to come in, way. I have to beat the green audio. It looks like we'll have a fight. I also have 90 feet dark vision. So. Okay. He sees them before they see us. It's yep. more like you're talking very loudly across um, the night and your voices are carrying. Mm -hmm. But you're not within that range yet. No one can actually see each other. However, yep. they could probably see you as the torch lights up. <sighs> they did not light a torch on their end, obviously. They can, yeah, they can really see the torchlight. I'm standing, uh, not, so if, I'm going to stand in the opening, and if the torches are positioned in such a way the light's not spilling back into the opening, they probably don't see me. Okay. Right? So, they might I mean, see I, the silhouette of you, or... Yeah, right. Oh, come on, you green fucks. Let's get it over with. You hear the sounds. It sounds like there are quite a few of them. Mm. How I many? <laughs> like, there's a lot. I throw down um, my water skins, and so it splashes all over the area in front of us. Just covers them with water. Okay. It splashes into the thick snow. Unless you want to do it to where you guys have trod and like. Yeah, I'm trying to do like the big, the main area in front of us. One kind of kind of so dump it up. There's a little yeah. bit of um, where you've tread and removed all the snow as you're just moving around. Mm. So you throw down the water. And then I'm going to use my cantrip shape water to turn it all into ice. Does shape water allow you to turn it into ice? Mm -hmm. You can freeze water. Okay, so you make freezing water at the front of the cave. In front of you, I'm assuming. Yes. So you guys are kind of tucking yourself back in the cave. It goes about 20 feet back. Arthur's at the very back awaiting whatever's coming for you. I yeah, now we're standing out in front. So this everyone is what I is aware of everyone at this point. No one is going to be surprised. I would like an initiative roll. So before we go down, I say to Tom, listen, Tom, in case this goes poorly, I'm sorry. Sorry, I was such a fool. <laughs> I look forward to dying with you one day, but it will not be tonight. Hi, let's hope not. But anyways, I'm sorry. I said hurtful things. I didn't mean it. Now let's kick some ass. And if we must, I will drink ale with you. Uh, it pains me to talk about ale, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> you can probably tell that. But... Sure. Let's do a bad job. I got it. <laughs> okay. So I rolled a 15. Theodore, you can see that they start, the first one steps into sight of your Is this a battle map? Or a theater of the mind? Theater of the mind. Well, it is 11.30, so it's probably going to be a battle for next week. Okay. Where you see not one, not two, not three orcs. You actually see a total of nine orcs. Oh, All no. walking their way up, fanning out, trying to basically um, pinch you in to wherever you're at. And let me roll another thing. Fifty-two. So as far as you know, nine orcs. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to end. Hmm. God damn it. We stayed in Hundlestone. <laughs> <laughs> it makes my heart warm to hear you say such things. <laughs> Okay, we'll end there. We'll do roses and thorns. We'll do some shout outs be do before we do roses and thorns. <clears throat> and skip. No, and
one play is what I want to do. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and do some shout outs. I got someone is asking, how do you follow? Well, on your stream, there is a follow button. You can click that. Yep. Thank like you. a tiny heart. And you can also follow us on YouTube if you want. We have a lot of cool videos there, a lot of different things that aren't just our campaign related. So I'll link that. You can join us on Discord and join the community. I'll link that. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for being here on Sunday morning. Let's go ahead and do some shout outs. I don't remember who I left off with. Ah, here we go. Some of all Nicks. Thank you for your follow. Oliver Ross, Bixie Official, Lefi Legu, Junjun Chained, The Maximian, Marks Circus, and Jim Taro. Thank you everyone for your follow. Thanks for being here. We're going to do Roses and Thorns. We do this after every game, what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it. And I'll go ahead and start. I'll, I'll say my least favorite and favorite. So I think the battle started off kind of yeah mm -hmm. just coming in after a battle and then you get to that point where you're down to one enemy and you're just duking it out back and forth it gets a little boring yeah and there was so little left yeah uh, if we should have stayed and finished it last time we should have stayed and finished the last time you're right or just cut before the fight because the fight started at like quarter after 11 you only hear me say this once, Brian, but you were right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's going to be a lot of roses for me this time around. And most of them are the roses and thorns. <laughs> um, so that's my thorn. I didn't really have any other thorns. I think the pace was a lot slower this game. But I don't think that's a thorn for me. That might be a thorn for people that are watching. I don't know. They might get a little bored. Might be boring for some people. I enjoyed it. I liked the slower pace. I liked the chance to role play, the chance to do different things that aren't combat related, that aren't even story related. Like, Fire Shear is not in the mix at all. I think you were supposed to go straight to Bryn Shander, but I didn't want to do that. <laughs> well, thanks, Dick Duck. We're not boring. I mean, I don't think we are, but some people might, and that's fine. I think watching us talk about these things can get a little tedious i think my favorite part though is when you guys are about to fight it's like ooh, brian and josh have never fought in my games this would be fun <laughs> usually i don't like pvp but i feel like it was okay in my book <laughs> you're, you're, you're like, let's see what happens well honestly we've been playing for so long together that i know you're not going to come away feeling like your feelings are hurt or you could have you could kill my character and i wouldn't be like hurt or you're like yeah you probably deserved it yeah. <laughs> you know what happens when you insult a dwarf sale and the reason i limit pvp in my campaigns including stealing from people is because can be like there might be times when you're like really you're gonna do that to me you fuckhead and people just get really upset in real life. That's why I just like, all right, let's not even worry about it. We don't have to cross that bridge. But I when it's you two, piss people off in real life before with in-game shenanigans. I mean, I've had people pissed off at me in real life before. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I know how it is. That's my but roses I mean, and thorns. It was fun. Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. Oh, I was gonna say. Um, no, I just think that like, yeah, we've all been playing together long enough that like if it went down i was cool with it going down and in fact probably my rose is that argument was really fun uh yeah so that, i'm glad that brian's barbarian didn't beat the shit out of my dwarf because that's probably how it would have went but <laughs> it was fun to play an angry stubborn dwarf you're like i can't heal through this <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to heal through it. I think it would have gone horribly poorly for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. So that was cool. Uh, the fact that Carmen was wrong is going to be hard to live down for a long time, I'm sure. 
<laughs> that might be my thorn is that when we stayed out overnight and the orcs found us. <laughs> yeah, if we survive, we're definitely staying at the next town, right? <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, we might even go back to the town before. <laughs> uh, if we get our ass to do it's too bad. Um yeah, I don't know. So, but even that's like a fun thorn, right? Like it makes for a good character interaction. So I like it. I just, I had a good time. It was a good game. Go ahead, Matt. Um, I have mixed feelings. Um, so I, I'll, I'll start with the thorn. Like I'm, uh, Ryan mentioned pacing and, uh, I think it was, a for me, it was a little too slow. And I think I probably wouldn't have minded in a campaign that wasn't based on a module like for some reason i'm just like this is a module and i want to see what happens next like really super bad so like the the shopping around and stuff like that uh, doesn't really appeal to me right now because i'm just kind of like i just want to see what the story is so that would have been if that's... you went to hundlestone <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> um, you forgot to vote. <laughs> I was just going with the majority. Um, so I guess that's that's it. I, I, I guess we're in a module and I'm just like, I guess I just want to play the module, not so much everything else, because I do know that we have an, another campaign planned for after this, and I kind of like I want to take my time with this one, but I re I really want to get to the the one that you have prepared, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's that's what's probably causing my like want to just move fo forward and forward. Uh, Rose, though, uh, it, yeah, Josh Josh versus uh, Brian was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of sad it didn't go down. Yeah, I am too. I would have just Sorry. stood there and watched, but <laughs> same here. Oh, you that's, know, that's Carmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wouldn't. I was, thinking, was, I was thinking. Well, Car I have known Carmen longer, and he is, you know, tied to Jakad. So I probably would have sided with him if it came down to it, but. As Thomas is pulling his head off his body. Yeah. <laughs> I should have helped him. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll just Alex. see how this goes. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I liked the uh, interaction between the uh, the insulting the dwarf and Hale and uh, the I was right and I get to fight something afterwards. <laughs> so uh, so I'll say around. that was my rose. <laughs> Um, Thorn, I, I hate agreeing with everybody else because I feel like we should bring something unique to the table each, but yeah, I'll say pacing. Uh, sometimes, you know, it, it felt like it started fast with the combat, which kind of trickled down to a, we should just skip this and then kind of went on to nothing but shopping. It would have been nice to go to like 1230 and get the combat out of the way, but starting at that time, we would have had the same issue as we did last time. True. I think it was a more natural stop point. Thomas. I mean, Brian. <laughs> uh, let's see. I... I think my rose was definitely when... The, it's hard to delineate the distinction between, um, you know, the slow downtime and the good downtime until you really look at it. And so like the technically, you know, the the chasing of Carmen around town was useless. Mm -hmm. But I felt like it was good because it kind of made sense for both who Thomas is and for who um Theodore is, like someone who's willing to just kind of, you know, he doesn't see the threat. So he was willing to fake it. And like, so both of those things, I, I got something out of. And also Carmen disappearing on, on me, abandoning me. 
uh, you know, got something out of that too. Um, and, you know, speaking, my, my favorite moment was actually um, punching uh, of course it was. in the face. <laughs> and not just because I got to punch someone in the face and get away with it, but because in kind of in the same way it made sense and there was something he was trying to actually teach um in the moment and so it wasn't just a uh, senseless violence he was actually you know trying to teach him to be <laughs> go ahead be strong be confident are you actually and, saying you're trying you're helping by punching him yeah uh, s- yes <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a great lawyer, Brian. <laughs> he was trying to do like uh like a the little inspirational speech and had had you even thrown your hand up to block. Um like I was gonna I was planning on um, playing it so that like you block and good, that was the initiative you taking. But uh you just stood there dumbfounded and took it in the teeth. <laughs> and I mean, that also shows something about like where you are, you know, where your head's at. I don't know. All those things are enjoyable to me. Uh, New Rose, you're justifying punching someone in the face in real <laughs> life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so good. You know, maybe I'm the only guy, sorry to interrupt, but I really like the the talking, doing shit time. Mm-hmm. That's like some of my favorite times of any of the games we play. Well, that was my rose. Yeah, it's that's good stuff. That's that is what I sign up for. To be honest, that's what I come every week for. You know? And I guess going along with that, what Matt was talking about, you were saying you're excited for the next campaign. Don't get too excited. This module will go for a while, so mm-hmm. enjoy it while it's here, because. We're on what session five, and I believe it'll probably go about forty. Maybe it might not go that long. Maybe you'll power through different things, but it'll go for a while. We could be doing this up until next January, which will give me more time to even prep my next campaign. So that's what you can be excited for, giving me more time. Oh man. <laughs> 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 we were so close to starting it. Fucking coronavirus. <laughs> like, no, this is a filler campaign. Like this is just like the campaign we're doing now, right? Like this is it, man. Yeah, I know. It's a thing. So enjoy it. Enjoy your character. Try to be more interactive in the uh, talky bits too. I know yeah, it's a lot harder I for me. Spent during... so long on that character. <laughs> yeah, but you will. You will play it eventually. And we'll be live by then for sure. Corona has to be done by January, right? Mm. I say crossing my fingers. <laughs> we'll be done with it either way. <laughs> yeah, it'll be done when they come out with a, a vaccine, but by then we'll all have gotten it and moved on. Yeah. We'll be dead. Herd immunity. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Thanks, guys, for coming on over. We will see you next Sunday at 730 and that's it for me thanks